Hey, 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 Lord have mercy. We're going to go live. We're going to see how this works. Hey, 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 hey. I was on live earlier. TikTok <laughs> suspended my privileges. But we're not going to talk about that. We got them back. That's all that matters. I can only be on here. Hey, creative elegance. El uh, creative elegance. Can only stay a few minutes, but I just want to say this. I'm coming back later, um, between six and six thirty, to talk about social currency and self self worth and social currency. Because I watched a girl earlier today, a little sprinkle sprinkle girl, that said she didn't understand why men thought that she was a barber the builder. So I was like, ma'am, everything about you says Barbara the Builder. Like literally everything about her said Barbara the Builder. Everything about her look, the way she carried herself, her manner of speaking, everything about her said Barbara the Builder. And I'm like, you don't, you don't see it. You don't see it. You don't, you didn't see it. I wanted to type, ma'am, you look like the epitome of Barbara the Builder. But she didn't understand. So I, I can't stay on long. But the way the algorithm works is I just posted a video. And so going live will boost that video, but I'm going to come back later and talk about how self-worth and social currency go together and how that relates to the sprinkle sprinkling. Because there are a lot of women that, that don't get the connection because they, number one, they don't know what their worth is. They don't know what their worth is. Some of them think their worth is up here and it's not. It's not. I'm sorry. It's not. Everybody think that they the same. You know what I'm saying? You female, I'm female. We the same. That shit is not true. Okay? It's just not true. Naomi Campbell got more social um, social worth. You know what I'm saying? Than I do. She has more social currency than I do. That's just what the shit is. And so I understand where I fall, like my personal self-worth versus social currency. Like I get the connection between the two. And as a result, I know how to pick men based off of what I want for that particular time in my life. And so a lot of these sprinkle sprinkle girls don't understand, number one, their self-worth. My price point is off. I don't know if it's your price point or the price point for the man that you want. But I'm going to talk about that a little bit later. But the, the very, very, very mm -hmm. first thing that has to happen is you have to understand your self-worth. And a lot of these women are delusional. They're straight up delusional. They think that their self-worth is up here. And so they are talking about some man up here taking care of them. Ma'am, you are not up here. That's what the problem is. And it's not about settling. It's not about thinking less of yourself. It's not about any of that. But you've got to have a fair uh, and reasonable expectation of your social currency. You know what I'm saying? So when people get on here and be like, oh, you're so pretty, yada, yada, yada. You don't see most of the time I don't even acknowledge it. You want to know why? Because in the big scheme of things, not TikTok, but the whole fucking world, I understand that I'm average. I fall in the average. I'm average. I might be slightly above average, but I'm fucking average when it comes to looks. You see what I'm saying? And so I understand that. But if I was delusional, I would think that me and supermodels are on the same level. We're not. You see what I'm saying? Just the fact that I'm a minority. I'm black. Blonde hair, blue eyed women with big boobs. More social currency. That's just the reality of it. You see what I'm saying? So I understand. I understand where I fall on the social currency. It's not about self-worth. It's not about what I think about myself. It's not about any of that. It's about social currency. And the problem is a lot of people have a lot of self-worth. They think very highly of themselves. But they have no social currency. None. See what I'm saying? And so they think that because they think highly of themselves, everybody else do. And no, we don't. We actually don't give a shit. You know what I'm saying? So you're up here thinking here, thinking you're going to sprinkle, sprinkle up here. And it's just not reality. There's a huge disconnect. You see what I'm saying? And like I've been watching all of these women say, oh, why can't I find a man to take care of me? You can. You got to understand where your social currency lies, though. And they don't get it. 
men get it. They know who they're going to take care of and who they're not going to take care of. And I promise you, we're talking about sprinkle, sprinkle people toy. It is shallow. We ain't talking about love here. We ain't talking about deep spiritual co connections. We're talking about getting a man that's going to pay your bills. It is shallow. 100% is shallow. I'm not judging. If you want a shallow ass relationship, I do not care. That is on you. <laughs> Honey, them relationships come with its own struggle. People be out here talking about, I don't want to struggle. Uh, I don't want no struggle love. If you think that you're going to get with a man and he's just going to give you his money and you ain't got to do nothing. Baby, again, do you, let me tell you something. These women, okay, that want that kind of lifestyle, they better choose a man all the way down here at the absolute bottom of whatever it is. You know what I'm saying? If they want a man to just come in and give them all their money. She better be beautiful, smart, big boobs, tiny waist. What my daddy used to say, um, waist like a wasp, ass like a horse. He was country. You know what I'm saying. Like, they better light skin, long hair, green eyes. If they want a man to just come in and give them all their money. Because other than that, if she all of that and she dating a man that can get 20 of hers, she ain't special to him. You see what I'm saying? That's why I say you have to understand social currency. If some hot, it says, if some hot person comes up to me, I always go, "What do girl? Me too, because I know where I stand. Me too, me too. When they too fine, I'd be like, mm -mm, I'm not about to work hard to keep you. I need a man to work to keep me. Mm -mm. I don't even date men. I'm, mm -mm, I'm, I'm a little bit right here. I know I'm here. He gonna be here just a little bit. I don't care if it's in terms of looks, in terms of job, in terms of social currency, in terms of anything. He going to come home every day thinking I'm the prize trying to hold on to me. I'm not dating somebody up here. And he got all these women to choose from. I ain't doing And plus some up here. I ain't doing that. I'm not doing that. That's why I say you have to understand your social currency. Zero to do with self-worth. Zero to do with um what's lazy what's what's lazy tight rn tell me what's lazy i hate it when y'all come in here with these baseline damn comments with no um context or explanation to it who's lazy lazy the women because i would dare say men are lazy because y'all don't want to cook you don't want to clean you don't want to clean up you don't want to contribute equally emotionally in the relationship Come on now. Meet a man. Meet. Okay, he blocked because I can't sift through what he's trying to say. And if, if they if they're not gonna be intellectual just a little bit, like there is no point of this conversation. He's talking about women are lazy. He can't even put together a complete thought and, and type it in less than a hundred characters on TikTok. I can't have conversations with those people. Okay? So, <laughs> like, this is not a conversation for the intellectually weak. It is really not. So, it's a conversation that people that can think critically about who they are and how they exist in the world. And I say this all the time. Boom, girl. Yeah. Yeah. I was about to say it. Stay. Know your lane. Know your lane. I was about to say it. Because when you know your lane, you maximize it. You maximize it. But these little smart cars over here on the Autobahn. And mad when everybody blowing like, get the fuck out of you over here. You ain't supposed to be over here. Get back over there in the damn slow people laying on the back country roads. That's where you need to be in a smart car. You don't get on the Autobahn in those cars. They're not fast enough. Love someone who loves you more. I don't even... It, they, this ain't got nothing to do with love. Scoop, don't bring love in it. This ain't got nothing to do with love. See, y'all... Now y'all talking about something else. We're not talking about them women. We're talking strictly sprinkle, sprinkle women that can't figure out why they can't find a man to take care of them. That's what we're talking about. They, the sprinkle, sprinkle women out there trying to figure out why I can't... You know, what, what about me say... Barbara the Builder. First off, if you are poor, 
You need to be a barber to build her. Let me just throw that out there. If you pour, who, if you already down here, you're not going to get nobody up here. Because you're already down here. So if both of you motherfuckers are poor, y'all need to, you need to be barbering and building, okay? That's the only way you're going to get out of poverty. Hey, Big Ron. Now, if you hear, that's like somewhere in the middle, middle class, you, you know, you got you a nice little job. I'm talking like nurses and teachers and, you know, people like that around that level, thirty to $40,000. You, you hear. That's average, people. That's average. You hear. Them average women, they, those are the ones that talk about they're not going to date a bus driver. Ma'am, you bus driver, trash man, that's who you need to date. Those are the ones that are going to think that you are the prize and go to work and bring that check home to you. Those are the ones. But see, these teachers and these nurses, I'm not going to date no bus driver. Who you going to date, ma'am? Somebody up here? He got you and every woman here, plus all these women here that are willing to be barber the builders, plus all these women that got way more shit than you. See what I'm saying? That's why you need to know where you, air, Jazz, everybody think they're above average. Everybody think they're above average. Everybody think, y'all going to make me pull out my VIN diagram. Let me, let me go ahead and pull out my VIN. Let me pull out my VIN. Let me go ahead and pull out my VIN. Because every time y'all be thinking one thing, and I got to pull out my VIN to uh, make this clear so that we all on the same page. Not my VIN. I got to pull out my bell curve. I got to pull out my bell curve. Hold on. Let me pull out my bell. Got to pull out my bell curve. And listen, somebody actually stole this shit and went and posted it on their page like they came up with it. And then the bitch was so dumb she couldn't explain it because I got a math background and she don't. Okay? I'm like, ma'am, if you're going to steal my content, Google it so that you know what you're talking about. Then they had the nerve to block me. Somebody sent it to me. I had to go to my other page to go look at her be dumb because I was like, ma'am, you that is not how this that is not how this works. Okay. You see this over here where it say some people. Okay? Most of us are over here in average. Now, you might be a little bit above average, but you're not exceptional. The problem is, there's a whole bunch of people running around here. Y'all think y'all some people. Y'all most. Most people is right here, okay? You can say you're above average, but you you still probably real, real damn average, okay? So, you just need to go ahead and accept you right here with average, where most people are. I'm right here with most people. I don't have no issues admitting I'm right here with most people. You see what I'm saying? The problem is a bunch of y'all think that y'all some people. Y'all not some people. Y'all not some people. Now let me take this off because I got my, my other hair on. It's got me looking crazy because it look like my head floating. All right, we're going to take this off. Okay? I'm not trying to insult anybody. I'm just saying most of us are most people. Mo let me tell you, them some people, they not even on TikTok today. Some people, they out doing above, like, super average shit. Like, they off golfing or something. I don't even know what them people do. They don't be on TikTok, okay? I can pretty much guarantee you that. We most people. We most people. If you're above average, get a nice average dominant. That is the lesson. That's the lesson. I'm going to go into it, like, real in-depth later. I'm going in depth because them little sprinkle sprinkle girls, they don't know. Girl, they had fundraisers in Chanel. Driving, I don't even know, cars that I ain't never even Bugattis and shit. That's that's to some people. You know what I'm saying? The problem is the above, the slightly above average people, they think they some people. And the average people, they think they're above average. Everybody think that they way more than what they are. And that's okay if you stay by yourself. You can be you can be all delusional on your own. The problem is you go out into the dating world with those delusions of grandeur. And then men knock you down a peg and then you be like, Me and shit. No, that's not what it is, ma'am. They telling you the truth and you just mad because your feelings hurt. You know. I don't know if I'm too humble, it too big headed. Candy, I'm, I don't know. I don't know what you're saying. And who is this conjure? You know what? I feel like blocking them just because they they name is something crazy. I stay by myself and my pay for a house. 
See, there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that. But there is love out there for you. But this ain't this ain't about love though. So the love conversation is a whole nother conversation. Too humble to or too humble or too big headed. Oh, you don't know if you're too humble or too big headed. You if you if, if you have to ask, you're not too big headed. You're probably too humble. And if if you're asking that, you're here and you dating too too far down here. If you asking that. Lord, somebody done tried to brand it. I'm declining because I, I just I just got my damn live back. I'm not messing with nobody today. Not messing with nobody today. I was on earlier. I promise y'all ain't say nothing crazy. I ain't, I ain't say nothing crazy because I've been saying I ain't going to say nothing crazy because I keep getting my lies. And they took it. And I said, what? In, but they only took it for 15 minutes. I feel like that's a warning. So I ain't saying nothing crazy. Ain't messing with nobody. I'm blocking. I'm blocking. Block it. Block, block, block. I'm putting. <laughs> blocking. I'm telling you. <laughs> I feel like that was a warning. Because I ain't, I ain't say nothing. I promise y'all ain't say nothing. Because I've been good. Uh, I've been good for about three weeks now. I've been going live. Talking about self-worth. I did a little three-day little workshop. I'm going to come back on a little bit later, probably about 6.15, 6.20. I got some potato salad I want to make. So, I'm just saying. Got me some potato salad. I told y'all, I'm country. I, I'm, I'm just eating potato salad. Like, dinner is potato salad. I might eat something else with it. I don't know, but it's potato salad and some more potato salad. That's all. I just got a taste for uh, a <laughs> potato salad. So, I tried to talk corporate to my friend. Girl, I got this little dude that I'm dating. He's so damn country. I don't try to talk. I don't try to talk. I, I, I talk country. That's it. That's all. He think I'm the best thing since sliced bread. Best thing since sliced bread. Now, he can't afford all of this. Let's be clear about that. He cannot afford all of this. But he'll be happy as hell to come up in here. I promise you that. So you better know your social currency. And when y'all, when you figure out your social currency, and see, I like my man just a little bit uglier than me. I don't be getting no man on the same level and fine with me making the same amount of money with as I don't get them men. They be they make a little bit less, a little bit uglier. That's how I like them. They worship the ground that I walk on. That's why I say I don't have no trouble finding a man. But these same women that can't figure out their social currency, okay. They uglier than me. They make less money than me. They don't have as much social currency as me. And they'll talk about me. And they can't find a man because they don't understand where they fall. You see what I'm saying? They don't understand. Just a little ugly. Not a whole lot ugly. Just a little bit, Ashley. Just a little bit ugly. You know what I'm saying? I'm kind of cute. So if he's a little bit ugly, he's going to be like, ooh, I like her. I like her. I always wanted one like her. Because half the time they be in high school. You see what I'm saying? And they can't get one of me. Couldn't get me in high school. But now I got my own money. Got my own car. I don't need them really for nothing much. But that one thing. He just need to come in with just enough money. Look just good enough. Now they still fine. I want to be clear about that. They still fine. But. They always wanted one of me. You see what I'm saying? They'll hold on. Brown skin. I ain't drinking on nothing. I'm telling you the truth. Linda, I'm telling you the truth. That's the problem. See, actually, but see, this is what I told everybody. I'm average. I'm average, though. But see, I understand that I'm still in the average. I'm not incredibly beautiful. I'm just average. Slightly above average. But the problem is, the women that come after me, they don't understand their social currency. They don't understand where they fall. See, I got advanced degrees. I got my own business. I got my own money. I'm smart. I got tits and ass. And all of that adds up for a certain kind of man. But it maxes out now. Now it maxes out. All of that maxed out. So I can go 50-50 on a man where I done maxed out at my level and build with him. Girl, I like men, okay? Or I can date down just a little bit. He gonna worship the ground I walk on. Or I can talk to these men and get my damn feelings hurt. 
These are the men of corporate America. You see what I'm saying? These are the, these are the retired generals. These are the retired lieutenant colonels. These are the... Um, you see what I'm saying? Those people I don't talk to. I, I talk to the retired master sergeant. Just probably got a nice little tech job right now. Those people on my level. Or I'm going to talk to the little country boys. That I always want it. See what I'm saying? Inside, outside, on the side, inside out, ma'am. That that part is irrelevant for this for this theory. You see what I'm saying? But the problem is when you date outside of your race, all of the social currency changes. It's like going from dollars to pesos. Now you gotta convert the shit. You see what I'm saying? You don't know what a British pound converts to the dollars. That's the problem. So unless you live in those social circles that you are dating outside of, again, you don't, you, you don't know your social currency. So I can't just go find a white man. People are people. They absolutely are not, Kimberly. They absolutely are not. And we're not going to have some conversation that's not rooted in reality. Stop playing with me. Stop playing with me. Because you're the same one that'll come in and be like, I'm not dating a bus driver. I'm not dating the trash man. Oh, a man got to have a job. He got to be this, that, and the other. Okay? So we're not going to pretend like all men are the same. Because they absolutely are not. Just like all women are not the same. We're going we're gonna to have this real conversation. We're going to have this real conversation. Thank you, Ashley. Men do a lot for you. Girl, you got them. Whoop, whoop. You want to join? If you want to join, go ahead and hit the plus. You got you got a cute face. You got them big old bitties that you have out. You know what I'm saying? You got a nice personality. You're smart. You got your own money. Men will come in and pay to be with her, even though she has her own money, because of who she is. And that same man will not do the same thing for another woman. But it's because of who she is and relative to two, who he is that make him want to do all of that for her. And then if you add love in it, this conversation, this, this conversation gone. But see, y'all don't even know how to get the basics. Y'all don't know how to do love and y'all don't know how to do transactional. Y'all don't. Girl, I wouldn't even, my country ass would never even move to L.A. I'm going to stay right here in this little country ass town where I'm the damn prize. Everybody know I'm the candle lady. That's what I'm going to do. 4,000 people. They trying to get with me. They they all know I'm single. They, they trying to move up in here with me. Dry that jag. That's what they trying to do. Okay? And right here, I am the damn prize. And I have absolutely no intention of moving. I'm going to stay right here and date these little country boys. Now, am I ever going to be in a Maserati? Probably not because they can't afford it. They're working at the local factory. They got some regular ass kind of jobs around here. Okay. Isn't it all transactional? Absolutely not. There are some people out here that believe in love. They need to love their man and they're willing to be poor with their man. I met plenty of women like that. Plenty. Go through hell and high water with their man. Because they love each other. Struggle together. Either they're going to struggle together or they're going to build themselves up out of it together. Plenty of women like that. Plenty. Plenty. Mm -mm. Women like that make men willing to rust the moon out of the sky. That's right. Did you see? And see the men will come in here. Nothing is absolute. <sighs> Blocked. We we not even entertaining anybody that's coming in having this ridiculous conversation as if we need to say not all men, not all women. This don't apply in every single situation. Like we don't need to say that at this point. We all been on the internet to know that they block. We not even we not even entertaining that foolishness. Why not teach them to love? That's a different conversation. That's a different conversation. You have either one or the other. Let me see who this is. Let me add. Come on in, Ashley. You can't have both because the values are too different to try to have both. You're either going to love the person or it's going to be transactional. Very rarely is do you start the relationship off 
um with both it's either transactional or it's love what's up ashley hey honey pie what's going on hey. today girl i see I you video. I'm listening. Go in the streets. <laughs> i saw a sprinkle sprinkle girl talk about what about me that say barbara the builder i was like ma'am everything about you say barbara the builder nothing about you say take care of me nothing not one thing you talk not not one thing <laughs> I um that I got, like this is the thing is is I have found that it is I don't know what has happened in our community that is so challenging to accept the truth and when people tell the truth then they're getting labeled as mean or haters or that they're dragging people and y'all we have got to stop this like it, it, it is insane and I will say this like to all the ladies in here because I'm sure some of y'all probably going over my page to look and see what I look like baby I'm a big baddie okay I have always been a thick girl I like men that like me fortunately God blessed me with a very beautiful face um and because of that and because of my career because I'm smart I've always been able to be around high earning men and I've had a lot of them pursue me and I'm going to say something and I'm not trying to tick anybody off. But basically what Deshaun is saying is not untrue. You have to understand your you have to understand probabilities over possibility for number one, just because something is probable or there's always an exception to the rule does not mean that it's going to be a possibility for you because when we shake out by the numbers it may or may not be likely and i'm gonna say this and i'm not meaning this to sound mean i'm not meaning this to sound harsh but this is just the truth as a woman we can compliment other women all day long but at the end of the day if you're a woman and you want a man you have to be what that man finds attractive period the same way you want a man that you find attractive and if that man is not what you find attractive whether it is from physical or financially or spiritually or personality or whatever you have on your list you're not going to give that man an opportunity it just is what it is so if there are men out here and they say i want a woman that dresses a certain way or carries herself in a certain way or looks a certain way because y'all let's be honest when men see us they don't look at us and go oh she sure looks smart they don't look at us and say they don't look at us and go oh she looks like she can pray they're not looking at us saying boy i bet i bet she can cook a mean pan of cornbread they are looking and they see they see sex that's what they see either they are attracted to you or they're not and based on that then they're going to decide if they're going to pursue you or not so we can say all day long to another girl you bad girl you fine girl you beautiful but at the end of the day if the type of men that you want don't find you beautiful if they don't find you bad if they don't find that they're attracted to you y'all it's just like marketing you have to you got to make yourself attractive to that to that to the opposite sex and i know some of the women don't like hearing this i know for whatever reason in your head y'all are hearing me say oh well we got to change for men i'm not saying you got to change for men but realistically you have to be attractive right to who you're trying to attract that's just that's just the bottom the bottom line and i'll be honest y'all too okay so i've always been in the circle realistically I, when it gets into and y'all when i talk about these high earning men the guys i fool with are half a million dollars and up and normally if you half a million you kind of on the poor side so these guys even when i was like a size 10 and that puts my waist at around a size six i was still the big girl every now and then i may have seen one of them with a woman that was bigger than me he normally was with her before he got before he blew up and got all of that money but she was big and bad and i mean by big fine very rarely would i see them with um like a like okay for instance everybody has seen the show my 600 pound life those women always have men very rarely do you see those women though with men that are 
100% providers as far as their high six figure, seven figure, eight figure tax bracket. I'm not saying that it may not be possible somewhere. I haven't been everywhere on the planet Earth, but realistically, you have to you have to kind of know where you fit, like Deshaun is saying. Then after we get past attraction, your social circle and your status absolutely positively do matter. I'm not going to go to the hood looking for the guy that's going to be the CEO of a company. Now, does that mean that there aren't smart men in the hood? They're absolutely positively smart men in the hood. I grew up around a lot of hood dudes. I live in Little Rock. So when I was a, growing up, banging in the rock is what was popping around here. So I grew it's a lot of gang bangers around here. However, those were men that were committing crimes. I didn't want to be with a man that was committing crimes. Were there dope boys that tried to holler at me and make me that girl and stuff? Of course, but that's not what I want it. So realistically, if I'm looking for a man that, you know, maybe can introduce me to a specific type of culture, can take me to specific places, a guy that's going to provide for me in a certain way to give me safety or peace of mind where I don't have to look over my shoulder and all of those sorts of types of things. Well, y'all don't want to hear this, but those men absolutely do look at women that dress a certain way because that's what catches their attention. They look at the women. Y'all should do an experiment. Every lady in here once a week, you should change your hair or your wig and look at the different type of men that try and holler at you just based on your hair. Go from a natural dude to something that's more sleek or pressed or straight. Go from a blonde to a very dark brunette or a black. Uh, go to a red or something that's curly or natural looking or some faux locks. Just do it. Literally. You are going to change the type of men that approach you just by changing your hair and your makeup. And I don't know why y'all get so pressed when women like Deshaun get on here and they are telling you, like, honestly, what the truth is. Like, it just, it just is what it is. And I know some of y'all probably feel like I'm being harsh right now. I'm not trying to be harsh. But realistically, if you want to be in a relationship, if you want to be married, if you want to be kept or whatever it is, you have to figure out, OK, this is the type of man that I want. What does that what is that type of man attracted to? It just is what it just is what it is. I told you their problem is a lot of them, they, they have high self-worth that doesn't translate out into the real world. And I'm not even saying that you can't think highly of yourself, but at the, the bottom line is this. I, gra I graduated from an inner city high school. It was hood, it was hood. And then I went to an HBCU and then I became a teacher. Like for me to think that those lower middle class values that were ingrained in me were somehow or another going to translate to a wealthy man was insane. Not without me doing a whole lot of work on the way that I talk, the way that I dress, the way that I eat, the way that I carry myself, where I live, the type of job that I have. Like it would have been insane. But when you say this to people, it's like their heads explode. And then when you add, if you are conventionally beautiful and thin, and sometimes that's all you need, like that's literally all you need to get the type of man that you want. It's like they, they come in my comment section and just want to argue with me. And I'm like, are y'all, do y'all go outside or do y'all just be on TikTok? Because this if you're just on TikTok, <laughs> But you're talking about being conventionally thin. It's true, y'all, like the body type changes from region to region. So if I go to the South or if I'm on the West Coast, even up in New York and stuff, men are like basically falling over themselves to open up the door for me, to talk to me. Um, if I go out to dinner, somebody, it never fails. Somebody's going to cop my dinner. They're going to send me a drink. Um, back in the day when I used to go out to the club, I always get invited to VIP sections, all of that. Okay, y'all, and I've dated very, very men that are in very high positions, like all the way from senators and congressmen to executives, founders of companies, the whole shebang, okay? But if I go to LA, the body type preference there is thin, very, very, very thin, even at my fittest, okay? Even when I have abs, I'm still not thin enough for the LA boys. I, there may be a few that holler at me because they have like a fetish or they want to know, you know, what it's like to be with a fluffy girl or something like that. But for the most part, 
that's not that's not my area of genius. That's not where I'm gonna shine it. And that's the reality of the situation. And you know, you As gotta you, you gotta be I'm sorry, I don't mean to interrupt. Let me just jump in right here because somebody said for how long? For fucking ever. Cause I am at least 10 years older than Ashlyn, and I promise you when I go out, I'm not buying anything unless I want to. When I go to the bar, there are men buying me drinks. At 52, there are men buying me drinks. Half the time, my bill is paid, and I have no idea who paid it. So when does it stop? Never. As long as you... Now, is it the same age of men? No. I mean, like, 25-year-old men are not paying for my drinks. But there are plenty of 40-ish, 50-ish, and 60-ish men paying for my food, my drinks, and anything else that I want. It never stops. I don't know why y'all got this misguided notion that somehow or another a woman is going to hit a certain age and all of a sudden nothing is going to happen. Y'all want to give that little peen away? Y'all handing that thing out like it's free. And if you think a drink or a meal would get you some, you will pay for the meal. And then if you really like the woman, if you really like her, I mean, you know what I'm saying? You're willing to do whatever it is to get her. Stop playing with me. So Sean, that's because they have been listening to to the red pillars, and that's something like I, I, okay, I love black women, but like we're also very problematic to ourselves. There's two real, there's two clear distinctions of us. There are those of us that want to elevate and do better, and then those there are those of us who are just with the ish. We trifelife.com and it is what it is. And for some of the ladies that are in here, they believe that it all stops at a certain age because they listen to the men with the mini microphones. And the reality of the situation is most of these men, when y'all are listening to their podcasts or you're going into their panels and debating them, why? They're not qualified. Most of these guys are sitting in here with TikTok lights and popcorn ceilings. They're behind on their child support. They're not able to support the women they're with. They've scammed a bunch of women into being poly with them. Not that I think that there's anything wrong with polygamy, okay? Um, I have some clients that are poly, but the clients that I have that are poly, their husbands take care of them 100% financially. Those women do not pay for anything. They're not if they if they work or have a business or something, their husband is like, oh, that, that's so cute. Well, this keeps her busy. I'm going to support her in the. They don't contribute. One of my clients, she's one to one. And for those of you that don't know, my one to one services to work with me start at one hundred and sixty five thousand dollars. She's wife number three. She gets a $10,000 allowance a month. Her husband pays for the one-to-one services. We've been working together for three years to build her business. She lives in a beautiful home in Texas. Her house is about 4,500 square feet. Every three years, she gets a brand new car. Her children go to private school. Um, Her husband's kind of like on a rotation between the wives on major holidays, in his birthday, they all go on like gigantic family vacations together. This woman <laughs> does not want for anything. OK, he takes care of her completely. So y'all are going to these men's podcasts and going to their panels and arguing with them on the comments on TikTok and Instagram, making them popular, helping them make money that they do not have. And they literally don't even meet the qualifications of the type of men that you say that you want. They're speaking for high value men and say, oh, high value men don't want a woman that looks this way. And high value women, men don't want a man, woman that's this age. Y'all, it's just not true. Look at Jeff Bezos. He just got engaged to his girlfriend. That woman is, isn't she like 53, 54? She has two baby daddies. Um, she's very educated, very successful. I think her business is worth like $30 million or something like that. And re- and I've told y'all before, these men, they absolutely do find it an asset if you're educated. They absolutely do find it an asset if you can communicate well. Why? Because they go to spaces and you need to be able to network with other people, the other wives and the other men. If something happens to them, they want to know that their children are going to be okay and you guys aren't going to talk turn into poppers in the street because they married a dumb woman that doesn't know how to do anything. So half of the guys, like especially shout out to all the Christian girls in here, y'all being these men with the little mini microphones that most of them men ain't even Christians. 
They some of them will get on here and talk about how they believe the Bible is fake. So I don't understand why y'all are believing these parameters that these men are setting forth. They're not in the club. They're not in the group. Most of them are a penny above poverty. They will get on the app and sit and be like, I'm not going to say anything until someone cash asks me $100. Now, a man that is really making money is not going to be sitting up here with sunglasses and TikTok lights and a popcorn ceiling telling you that he's not going to say anything or give you give you the thought, aka what you should be thinking until you pay him. I had to interject. You know, I, I try not to interject my guests, but I, 360 smooth, 3.5. Jeff Bezos is a perfect example because most men marry a woman. Okay. First, most men marry a woman close to their age. That's number one. Wealthy men, wealthy, I mean, we're talking super wealthy, not the people that's going to be on this live and this TikTok, because if you're a part of my algorithm, you really don't even have the room to be talking about a Jeff Bezos type of man. Their first marriage, they marry women their age, their second marriage, they generally marry a woman 22 years younger. Now, that's what Forbes found, okay? So in a sense, Jeff Bezos is kind of an anomaly. But in reality, a lot of men end up with women that are their age. Bill Gates is dating a woman that is his age. Most men end up with women somewhere near their age, unless they are the hyper wealthy. And then it's a 22 year age gap. So he's typical in a sense not typical in another but we're also talking about somebody that is in the less than 0.0000001% of the whole world's population so when you start talking about typical and not typical it's almost like the conversation becomes irrelevant but that's math and y'all don't understand it regardless of if you are in this live you don't have any frame of reference to know these people interact with these people understand these people talk to these people nothing Dating and marriage block. Let me go ahead and block them. Because again, if you in this line, in that circle, <laughs> it's true though. Because the men in that circle, they will consider the men that I'm around poor. You know what I mean? And the guys that I'm around are making, some of them are making 15, 20 million dollars a year. They're not poor by far, but whenever you start around people who make billions, well, yeah, you can go somewhere with your little funky 10 million, 20 million, 18 million. It, it does not compare. You're not in the same ballpark. And y'all, this is when Deshaun was talking about social circles earlier. This is very true. <laughs> like y'all will, y'all will start to learn this as your income goes up. Just look at how you vacation and the places you vacation. There are different invitations to social events that you're going to get once you get to a certain socioeconomic status and you're in a and you're in a particular circle that other people don't even they're not even aware it exists. The banks that you bank at, the um things that the banks will do for you. When I look at how my bank treated me when I was, you know, maybe making like 100, 200,000 dollars a year compared to when I hit like my first million, then compared to when I hit my first 5 million dollar year, totally different y'all I, I call the vps at the bank i don't deal with a regular with a regular teller they come to my Tell house it. and get whatever it is Tell that it. i want or that i need i get invited to the president's clubs for almost all of the universities around here i am invited to exclusive like events in other countries and stuff all the time um when i go to dior my rep over there i i get to walk in in front of everybody they reserve the back room for me they have all the little snacks and champagne out for me and all of my friends the other women are looking at me like who is this woman especially because i'm black and they're like what is going on right now i get invited to their private openings to their dinners i have the ability to have my own little events inside of their stores which i'm working on that right like it y'all i'm just telling y'all it is very very different and so the 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 status in the social circle coupled with a woman if as far as your appearance and being with those type of men deem attractive does shift the type of man that you get and so if you are out here looking like barbara the builder yeah they're men y'all this is the thing men may not be able to verbalize what they're feeling about you energetically but they know that they feel it and y'all are wild for one second if you don't think that men put us in categories when they meet us of a home girl a smash girl a woman they want to pursue as far as a relationship who they want to marry y'all are nuts if y'all don't think that that is happening immediately it happens immediately 
I would dare say within the first 24 hours, they have made up their mind what they're going to do with you. And I don't care. Y'all will stay in these long term relationships and then get mad when somebody come in and say he's not going to marry you or he don't like you that much. Get mad at them when the reality is, you know, it's true because men know what they want pretty much immediately. No lies. Uh, let's say, yep, a lot of women build these uh, men for other women, and it's true. They do. Y'all, I... This is what I'm talking about. This is what I'm saying. These dudes, I'm sorry, Ashley. These dudes, I'm going to go ahead and block them, because I just got my live privileges back. So they warned me early. Let me block them. Let me make sure he blocked before I say what I got to say. Because these dudes going to be in the comment section lying to y'all. They are lying to y'all. The last dude that I met, I promise you, I we were hanging out. It was like two months later, two months, not even two months later. We were hanging out and he looked at his cousin and he said, I'm going to marry her. And I was looking around like, I don't know what he's talking about. Like she was like, oh, if he said it, he means it. That dude has stood firmly on we're going to get married since he, he said he knew it when he met me. So don't listen to these dudes. They they might not ask you to marry him within 24 hours, but within 24 hours, they're thinking, OK, this going to be the one and he going to move differently for you. Period. Yep. It is. Corey told me he knew on the first date, y'all, and we were engaged within five months. And he wanted to get married uh, July of last year. And I was the person that pushed the date back because I was like, that's not enough time if we're having a wedding. I was like, now, if we leave and go to Mexico or go to Vegas or something and elope, sure, let's do it. But he wanted to have an actual wedding. So I was like, there ain't enough time. And I pushed it back into November. But he told me, he said, first date. And I've had several other men propose to me. And normally they are talking about getting married to me within probably within 60 days. Like you were saying, Deshaun, it, it don't take a long time. Not for, not for grown men. It don't. Not for, listen, I've been single. Okay. I, I got divorced. Me and my ex-husband broke up in 2019. I've been in three serious relationships. Every one of those men wanted to get married. Every single one. And not on some, one of them was a millionaire. Let me just throw that out there because y'all going to come in and be like, blah, blah, blah. Not only was he a millionaire, he was 10 years younger than me. Okay. He had homes everywhere, but I was like too fresh out of the divorce to even think about it. The next dude was retired military with another really good job. And I was just like, and eh, he was just, I, don't, I ain't going to tell you what was his issue was, but I was like, I can't do it. Oh, cause, <laughs> um, and this, this, the last guy, um, just a regular degla Joe. But like I said, I live in the country and regular degla Joe's is fine with me. But everybody that I've been in a serious relationship with um, has asked me to marry them. So I'm telling you, there's no such thing as a wall. There is no such thing as younger men not dating older women. There's no such thing as if you fat, you're not going to find a man. Men know exactly what they want and they will pursue it differently when they make up their mind that you are what they want. The problem is, again, some of y'all, <laughs> y'all know where you fall. You don't, I know who, I know who going to love me. I know who going to worship the ground that I walk on. Those are the men that I choose from. It's the truth. You just like you can't be out here. <laughs> There's a reason they have this term talking about, and they say that a man or a woman is out of someone's league. That it's because everyone else can look and see, too. And they're like, OK, this is a match for this person. And it's surprising when someone is with someone that people consider them to be out of their league. And, you know, I remember my papa even telling me this when I was, I don't know, I guess getting around the age where you would start dating, maybe like 16, 17. And my papa would always tell me, he would say the man, or it, this time it was a boy, right? Because I was a teenager. The boy has to like you more than you like him. He needs to love you more than you love him. Y'all, my papa told me that okay this is not something that i got out of a book or something like that my papa made sure he got us ready for life and i'll be honest when i look at the ladies that i see and they're pursuing and chasing these men and trying to do everything that they can to prove their love to them those girls get dogged out 
they get done wrong. They get took down through there. And no matter how much you love these guys, no matter how much you do for them, no matter how many of their flaws you accept, no matter how many excuses you make for them, it will still never be enough compared to women who like themselves, who understand their positions, that have appropriate boundaries, and that those women men are doing everything to be with them everything from and this is the thing ladies like Deshaun was saying this man may not buy you a Maserati but if he buys you a Honda or a Toyota and you you know what I mean and he puts you in a in a nice neighborhood maybe a good three bedroom two bathroom or four bedroom two bathroom house that's in the suburbs you know what I mean or the middle of America or the south or something like that there ain't nothing wrong with that. You don't let some heifer on Instagram who's gallivanting with a bunch of millionaires make you feel like your man is not doing enough for you because because her guy bought her a Mercedes. Because guess what? There's going to be some other woman that's dating a man that makes more than that and her man is going to buy her a Rolls Royce or a Bentley and then there's going to be somebody else that's dating some man that's super wealthy and he's going to buy her an island or a helicopter you know what I'm saying like you just have to know <laughs> you just got to know what it is and realistically I feel like too many of us as a whole are comparing ourselves to these other people and y'all don't understand that that's a very 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 small segment of the population that's living that way you know and i think for me one of the main reasons i got on here and i started telling my story is because i tell everybody i'm granted like you know i got my own business and all of that and there's a lot of oculates that come along with who i am but at the end of the day I live a very regular life. Like it is super, I call it super regular. You know what I'm saying? And too many, we don't see enough women on here dating regular men, living regular lives. Now I know I'm still kind of high up, but generally speaking, my life is very regular in comparison to you, Ashley. <laughs> Because when you said something about Dior, and I'm like, I don't even know how far I have to drive to find a Dior store. Like, that's just not a part of my world. Not that, not that I'm hating or anything. Well, I'm hating a little bit. No, but. it's not. But no. it, I mean, it's true because I have to because I have to leave the state. Like, I have to go to Texas or when I go to like Charlotte or New York or something. That's where I go do all my little fancy shopping. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> that's when I get all of that done. Or when I go to Hawaii, that's when I like to go to the Air Med store because I can get what I want out of there because they're used to, you know, wealthy women that are traveling and crap but i'm with you i live in the country in arkansas there's no dior here girl we don't even have a macy's in arkansas okay i have to drive to memphis to go to god dang macy's so i yes we same girl same thing yeah so i just wanted people to see that you your man can be regular like your yeah. your, your life can be regular you can just live regular and that is okay too and i live in the country so i see a lot of country women living like great lives like these women are happy mm -hmm. happy when i tell you and they man working bringing home their check to their wife they got this nice little life they got their kids i mean these women yeah. are happy they're not putting pressure on their man to go out and buy some you know something ridiculously expensive for this country living that we're doing and i'm just like i wish that more I wish that we saw that more, like happy regular couples, just doing oh, this regular is the couples. Thing. It's there, but it's not exciting to people, I think, so they don't support it. Like, um, like I was talking to this, I was talking, she probably, I think she's maybe like 22, 23, you know, she was, she was still like super young. And um, I was asking her, cause she was saying, you know, I know I want a guy. And I was asking her, what does she want in a guy? And she started listing off all of this really ostentatious stuff. And there's nothing wrong with that. Like, let me make that clear. If that's what you want for yourself in life, go for it. But realistically, you know, looking at the men that she has to choose from in this area. And I asked her and I said, well, how many men do you think you're going to find in your age range that can afford you know, some of these things that you're asking for. And she was like, oh, they're out there. And I was like, no, baby, no, no, they're not. And if they're out there and they're from here, guaranteed they D boys or they're a part of some type of criminal activity or they're some type of scammer. That's a, you know, the lifestyle that she had, that she had listed out, she would literally have to be with a man that was making two or $3 million a year. And also, you know, sometimes seeing these things on social media, I don't think that women are always aware of what some of this stuff costs.
cost, right? Um, and so, uh, and so, I, and so, I asked her. I said, "Were you willing to date older men?" And she was like, "Well, what do you mean by older?" I was like, "Probably someone that's going to be in their late thirties to mid forties at this point, you know, to find someone that's making that type of income." Um, and realistically, I was like, there's not that many of them around here because I'm in the country, right? And when you're in the country, everyone knows one another, okay? And so if you're dealing with like here in central Arkansas, all of the black men here that have something going on for themselves, all of them know each other or they know of one another. So I'm already knowing, baby, it's probably on about 20 men out here that would fit this bill that are single, you know what I mean? Yep. And then they got to find you attractive and you got to find them attractive to even to be able to pull this off. And so I, I think it's coming from, you know, the regular happy life is not exciting to people or it's not like fantasy enough to people or something like that. And so and I also believe that social media makes people believe that some of this stuff is way more common than it really is. You know what I mean? Like I'll tell people in a heartbeat, my life is not common. It is like a effing dreamland. I wake up some days and I'm like, goodness, good. You know what I'm saying? Like, I can't believe that this is what God had in store for me and he chose me to be able to live in this particular way. It's not normal. And I also share with people, I worked my butt off y'all for 10 years to build what I built. And this is not overnight for me. I, 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 <laughs> Can we please talk about that? Can we please talk about that? Because I do not think that people understand how hard you have to work to get to a certain level. I think that people yeah. honestly believe that it is just like something that happened overnight. And it is not. When people ask me, how did I get, you know, into Macy's or how did I do this or how did, you know, PayPal fly crew out or whoever it is, whatever, um, go, just a whole bunch of stuff that I've done. I look at them. I'm like, do you understand how, what I've had to sacrifice to build this company to where it is uh -huh. to get these kind of accolades? This is not something that came easy. Do you under, like every day I'm working? I tell them quick, I'm not on TikTok for shits and giggles. The more popular I become on this app, the more money I make for Southern Elegance. Then I started a coaching yep. business. Like, there's a whole, I'm not just here for fun, just talking to y'all. There is a whole purpose behind this. And I'm just like, but I think that they really think that everything comes easy. But I'm dropping five, six TikToks a damn day, trying to build up, finding the right words, the right algorithm, the right SEO, the right people. And then I'm trying to do this for two, me and my company. I'm like, do these people really, but they really think that it is just easy. No. They yes. don't because they, because, okay, so people like to be lied to. <laughs> like, y'all like yep. to be lied to. That's that's the truth. That's the truth of the matter. Y'all want to be lied to, and we live in this era where everyone's like, let's be delusional. No, it is, y'all, delusion is going to get you hurt. Now, you should absolutely, like Deshaun said earlier, have a healthy dose of self-worth and self-esteem. That is absolutely true. But, like, things come in steps. You don't go from nothing to all of a sudden like, oh, I have a multi-million dollar company and I'm in all these great places and I have all these great opportunities and all of this networking. No, you set realistic goals for yourself. If your first thing for some of y'all may be to figure out what do you even want in life? Some of y'all don't know what you want. You're letting social media tell you what you want, but like, what do you really want? you happy everything from relationship to finances to spiritual to physical whatever it is that's going on the second thing once you do that okay well what's my first step to achieve that your first step may be getting a book it could be going to a conference you may need to like i would encourage you you get a coach you know and i, I will tell y'all there's only a handful of people out here that i would say is a good coach the sean is one in the handful because she's not a scammer she has a lot of experience in what she's been doing. If you get stuck, she can help you get unstuck. She can keep you from taking right a bunch of, you know, missteps and pitfalls. And she's going to be honest with you. You got to line up with personality wise, right? So I, I own the cool. I'm not trying to be funny. It's really only five or six of us that I would say, nah, like she's cool. Go, go work with her. Like, right. Because we have this other thing too. 
you know, if people in our community like to go up for a scammer if the scammer lied to them and they like what the scammer told them. But there's a whole there's a whole nother conversation. I then y'all say on top of <laughs> on top of doing the work for the business, y'all, there's a whole bunch of personal development, right? So everybody on the internet focuses kind of like on the sales or the marketing or going to the meetings. But no, you you need to be getting a thesaurus in a dictionary and doing a word of the day so you can expand your vocabulary. You absolutely positively should take an etiquette class because you're going to be in some rooms where you need that. You may need to look at how people that are where you want to be at, how they dress, right? When people talk about leveling up, it's not always for a man. Sometimes it's about you and what you want in life and how you want to present yourself and what you want to come to you. And I'm talking about when I say look at the way they dress, everything from the hair to the nails to whatever, because there's a code of conduct once you get inside of certain places. You may have to get some experience with how you operate or how you act once you go to certain types of meetings. You may have to learn how to put together a pitch deck. You may have to learn um, how to do some type of coding. You may have to learn how to read specific reports. You may need to find somebody and say, hey, I'm in the beginning stage of my business. Who's going to help me with this part so that the business structure is set up right? And then you meet a bookkeeper that shows you how to put your initial stuff in order. Then you may graduate and say, now it's time for me to scale. Yeah, all of this is development. It's constant development. And even now, I'm still always working on trying to improve myself. I'm still always working on trying to make myself better. Everything from like my interpersonal to my extra personal to what I got going on spiritually like it's y'all it's constant you might as well get used to that being a state of life it is constant work but this is the thing it's hard to struggle and it's hard to be successful and i'll tell y'all this it's way more fun to be successful than to struggle so you so you may as well put in the work to be successful <laughs> i love my little jag you said something about a hundred thousand dollar car i was like well that'll get me robbed around here probably robbed and killed so I was like, I can't do that. No, we got to keep, we got to keep you safe. Got yeah, like, we got to keep you safe. Girl, I got a Jag too. I love, I love, <laughs> I love <laughs> my Jag, honey. Me and the Jag. <laughs> Keisha, go ahead. Uh, I just wanted to say thank you for letting me up. But <clears throat> I think that a lot of women, like just like me, we have the knowledge, we read the books, but we don't have the money. Like, how are some ways that women can get that initial seed fund without scamming, without doing something seedy? I'm going to say this. If you cannot figure out how to sell your thing, you do not need to be in business. Now, you either need to do shows. Um, if you got a physical product, you're going to have to get out there. You're going to have to do shows. You're going to have to do school bazaars, church bazaars, fairs and festivals. Y'all don't want to do the work. That's number one. If you don't want to do that, then you're going to have to learn e-commerce. You're going to have to learn about the customer journey. Like you're going to have to learn about branding. I do getting people into your funnel, your website optimization, using social media, paid versus free um, social media. Like you're, there is so much to it. And then how to upsell, downsell, email marketing. Like you're going to have to learn how to do all of that. So either, and really what I had to do, I had to grind it out and learn how to do e-commerce at the exact same time. But y'all don't want to do that. And I promise you, if you cannot sell one thing or 10 things or 20 things, nobody's going to want to give you money. If you can't figure out how to sell the thing that you're selling, why the hell will I give you my money to try to figure out how to sell the thing that you're selling? You want to know when I got the most money? when I was already doing millions of dollars in sales. Like that's when they showed up and was like, you need some money. I was like, what the fuck? I needed money last year. But once you start making money, that's and when nobody they gives you money when you need it. <laughs> It's true. Nobody gives you money when you need it. I started with one hundred twenty-five dollars oh, in a laptop, Lord. so I don't. Believe, so Christ. I don't believe oh, in. And there's no hold money. On, hold on. Because somebody said okay. people are getting loans for startup or investors. Do you think that those are black people? Do you think that those are black women? I can tell you that they absolutely are not, because I mentor for several organizations that focus strictly on helping black women start their business. And one of the first things that we tell them is do not count on somebody giving you some money because it's probably not going to happen. That's number one. Number two, in this economy, you think people out there giving out money? 
They're trying to get the money that they gave out. If you don't have a business like these grandiose TikTok uh, experts and gurus do not know what they're talking about. And then when you get people like me or Ashley or whoever else is telling you the truth, y'all come in with these platitudes. Somebody getting money. Somebody is. But I'm being you next to none. We just had this conversation. Very true. Oh, sorry, um, a, like, a black, no, it's, it's true. A black business owner um, is likely to get offered about $25,000 in capital, which is pretty minuscule compared to a Caucasian owned business when they're able to raise on average somewhere between uh, $2.2 and $3 million in capital. So there's a humongous difference. And there's tons of studies too that show that you can take a black business owner, uh, match them up with a Caucasian business owner. They can have the same credit score, the same level of education, same credentials. The, Everything can match across the board and the black business owner is nine times more likely to get denied, y'all. So, um, it, it, yeah, there are some people that are getting startup loans and stuff like that. And I have a program. We have a private lender and we assist people in that area. But, you know, the truth of the matter is a lot of y'all are going to have to bootstrap it. I had to bootstrap it. I didn't get a I didn't get a business credit card or my first loan until I had been in business for about three and a half years. I did everything from scratch, everything. Are y'all saying scratch is like the e-commerce, the, the digital books, or whatever they want, they're interested in? Oh, so no, I'll be honest, it's not, not really necessarily the digital books. It's about being disciplined. So for instance, one thing that a lot of people don't want to do, like Deshaun was saying, you got to work for free 99. Free 99 leads to pay 99. Don't nobody know you yet. They don't know what your product is. They don't know what your service is. They don't know what your offer is. And so you need to build something called a portfolio and you need to get testimonials of people that are saying this is actually what it is. Secondly, a lot of y'all are inconsistent on your social media. If you are going to pursue e-commerce. That's the easiest way. Um, you actually need to be posting like TikTok minimum of four times a day. Instagram wants you to post about six times a day. If you're on YouTube, you need to be uploading at least one video per day. But realistically, you need to be uploading in anywhere from three to six videos that are in between five to seven minutes long every single day. And I'll say that people are like, oh, that's a lot. Well, then you don't want a lot of money <laughs> because that's what it is. You got to be on the comments. You got to respond to the DMs. You have to be very, very clear in what your offer is. A lot of y'all need to go and audit your bio so people know who it is that you help and what you help them with. You got to be customer focused instead of self-focused. 80% of your content that you put out needs to be related to your target audience. You got to put out a piece of broad content every day. You got to put out a piece of niche content every day. On the back end, you're probably going to have to build your own funnel when you first get started because you're probably not going to have 15 or 20,000 to pay someone to do it for you. So you're going to need a link tree. You're you're going to need an opt-in page. You're going to need a confirmation page or some type of paid offer. You are going to need an upsell and a downsell offer. You're going to need a free community so that way people can develop a relationship with you because, again, don't nobody know you yet. And those are going to be people that are going to be interested in whatever it is you have to offer. And then you have to get comfortable with the idea of offering your products. And everybody in here needs to start text message marketing because people are 80% more likely to open up a text message than they are to open up an email. And on top of the online stuff, you still got to be offline. You need to go join the Chamber of Commerce or BNI or Next Generation Young Professionals Group so you can get leads and you can start the process of building your name up in the community and building up relationships so people trust you. And if you're a young woman, I would highly encourage y'all, if you have a junior league chapter, to join that because now you're going to get access to the people that make decisions and that will say yes to you because they know you. It's a lot. I want to be clear. It's a lot. And most of y'all don't realize um, how much is really going to be until you get in it. And then you're shocked because you thought you were listening to Internet coaches. I cannot tell you the, the number of times that I've seen people say, oh, here are three easy steps to start a candle company. And I just be looking like, well, like, I don't recommend this to anybody. Like this is a, this is a grind. You are going to have to learn a lot of stuff in addition to learning how to make a candle that doesn't burn down somebody's house. 
So I'm just like, this is a grind and most of y'all are not ready to grind. And I wanna be clear, 90% of small businesses fail for a reason. Most people get in it and be like, I don't wanna do this. It's just easier to go work for the man. And there's nothing wrong with working for the man, except the pandemic made everybody think that they could be an entrepreneur. And it's just not reasonable. Really true. And I would honestly say, y'all, when you're getting started, you do what you can. But honestly, one of the best one of the best things you will ever spend your money on is getting into the proper mentorship program because <laughs> The learning curve that you're going to be on on your own, where it's going to take you years to figure out things, you can, that person is going to cut it down for you, like tremendously. So the another thing I'm going to tell y'all to do that nobody likes to hear, you got to fix your personal credit. If you don't have personal credit, you got to establish it. And y'all don't want to hear that. But the reality of the situation is if your paperwork is right as far as your business structure and you have good personal credit, you can go into a bank with $5,000, put it into a business bank account, and they will say, hey, could your business use a credit card? And you'll say yes. And they literally will give you a credit card in between ten dollars to $50,000 on the spot. You may get into a promotion where you don't have interest for 12 to 14 months. That's the money that you can use right there. If you need to get into like a, a base level coaching program or a book or conference, that's the money you can use for your first set of ads. That may be the money that you need to use to buy your first set of supplies where you can learn how to make your candles properly. That may be the money that you can use to put towards a set of TikTok ads or Facebook ads or Instagram ads or YouTube ads. But there are a lot of things that we're not taught so we don't know the game. And sometimes y'all, you're trying to rush and sometimes you're gonna go faster going slower. So if it takes you six months to fix your credit, fix your credit. Simultaneously start building up your audience on social media so you got somebody to sell something to. You start getting in the books or buying their, um, you know, buying like lower tier products or programs. And then if you get the money to get into a coaching or a mentorship program with somebody that you feel is legitimate, then you spend that money, you get into the program. They may have a payment plan or something like that. If you got good credit, you make and pay with for with a firm or PayPal, PayPal credit or something, you know what I mean? Or a CESL or whoever it is that they're using. But there are ways out there. You just have to be disciplined enough to put in the work. And then while you're doing all this stuff on the business side, you still got to try and keep yourself in check spiritually. You still got to try and keep yourself in check mentally. You still got to do the best to try and keep your health together. You still got to do your best to keep your edges and retain your length and all this other stuff, too. And realistically, working with a mentor, not only are they going to say, well, here's the pathway to do it. They're going to help you with the time management. They're going to help you with the personal development. They're going to keep you from being overwhelmed. So I would tell anyone, you know, you do what you can with your own resources as far as building up your audience and stuff. And then on the back end, go and pay somebody y'all because they'd already been there, done that. If you're trying to start a candle business, why are you out here? Like there's only so much you're going to get from YouTube and Google. So why are you out here trying to do something and you don't know how to do it? Make it make sense. Jerry and it was Jerry and somebody. Go ahead. And, and Jesse, yes, ma'am. Yes. Hey, how y'all doing? Good. Um, I I want to be like a thousand percent transparent, oh, and okay. um, I get everything now that you guys are talking about, um, because I've started to learn more about getting into business, what it takes. I've tried multiple times over the years, and was not able to keep, like able to get to a place where I could see something and say, you know what, I'm gonna keep doing this. And so I did a lot of like going within self, understanding my mindset, understanding why I'm having, you know, these impulsive decisions. And ultimately it got me to a point where I didn't understand credit going up, growing up or once I did get a decent enough job, going to get a car and being bamboozled by the people. Um, oh, you can't get a used car. You have to get a brand new car. I'm like, what? Okay, I mean, so having to go through all that and rebuilding my credit and everything. Now I'm 30 years old. I decided that I needed to do like a hard reset, like a hard, hard reset. So what I decided to do was go to work, save my money, save my money as much as I can. So I plan on moving 
um, out of the country to Africa next month for about seven months. So during that time period, I already laid out the debts that I have, the stuff that I need to tackle, um, the yeah, paying off my debts. Then I just got my credit to the point where I was offered my first credit card, even though it was crap, but it was like a little, it was, it felt good to get that, you know? So it made me feel like there's progress with some things. So I want to break old habits and mindsets that I grew up with. So I felt like, yeah, I, I am um, married to someone that's there, but I felt like it would be the best thing for me as far as trying to take myself out of, you know, the, the environment that I grew up in and only knowing to take myself out of and reevaluating everything, the systems, how the systems work, and with whatever money I have, money. trying to get back to a point where I could come back to America and start fresh with a, a different business and then actually succeeding in that business, you know, versus having all of these things where I need the money, I need the money. So I'm just applying, applying, applying and getting more, you know, get my credit score lower and lower and lower. I'm taking the time out to have a hard reset to face those issues that got me to that point. So everything now that you guys are saying, I, I made sure I understood that information and I've been researching this information and everything y'all are saying is a thousand percent correct. But when a person have not acknowledged the mindset they're in, it's like you're speaking Spanish. It's like, it doesn't even, it doesn't make sense. You know, how can I do that? When I, you know, I can barely get a credit card for $200. How can I, it's all about addressing your mindset, going into things and then doing what you have to do to understand that some things are not normal, especially in the black community. I used to think that going places late was normal. It's a black thing. And so I realized once I came late to a place, they turned me right around. And from that point, I made sure I was early. But it's so crazy to me that we do have things that we genuinely feel are normal and that everybody goes by those things until you realize, hold on, wait, wait, this is not what everyone does. So I feel like stepping outside of my element, stepping outside of people that are like-minded or, you know, that enable those decisions and the way I go about things it will give me a better insight of what I'm in. And the stuff that I'm thinking is normal, maybe it's not normal. And maybe that's why I'm stuck in the position that I am. Like working hard, busting my butt, cause I drive trucks, busting my butt. Like, and I can't seem to feel like I'm going forward. So I'm like, okay, I'm doing a thousand percent of what I can do, but at this level. So I have to go to another level in order for me to push through and actually see results. So I'm like, I'm so excited about it now. Um, I started also um, a touring business in Ghana. That's my one to help me with, you know, a little finances while I'm there. But other than that, I have everything set in stone, but I'm like, okay. So going about the business, I know I have to cut out a lot of the making excuses part of things and I have to get it done because now Africa don't have no 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 um no thing to catch you when you fall or if you mess up you you have help you can get a loan or you can do this and that I have to really put myself in an environment to if you do not work if you not do not do this you will starve you will be out on the streets you would not have nothing so I felt like it's beauty in that. Some people look at it like, why would you? It's definitely beauty in that because it brings out things in people that, you know, if you don't have that experience, you're going to always play it safe. So now, everything that you said is correct. And it is really great to hear. Like one of the things I harp about is a lot of people, a lot of people are not self-reflective. They cannot look at their own behavior and figure out how their behavior is either helping or hindering their success. They're, they just blame all outside forces. So the fact that you're like really introspective, understand, you know, what your strengths and weaknesses are, and then are able to maximize that, that says a lot about you. But as long as you stick to your plan and do what you, you know, put in the work, you'll be successful. You'll be successful. 
Well, thank you so much. I'm, I I just started following you. I just seen your page because um, I, I do follow <laughs> Miss Ashley. So I follow her and I was like, who is this? But yes, I love hearing it. Like I'm sitting here and I'm like, yes, she's telling the truth. But that mind has to be on the same level. Your mindset has to be at the, as much as you want to work hard and do stuff. Yeah, for that after effect. But your mind has to constantly be on that. Like you can't, yeah. So I've definitely, that's just a transparent moment for people who are in these situations um, to not feel like, oh, I can't relate. I can't, I don't, you know what I'm saying? Everybody goes through it. Start where you can. You might can do a, a, a master reset in your situation, figure out a way, but you have to give yourself that to get on the mindset of this do or die, you know? I don't have no one to fall back on. It's all me. You know, I have to make this work and then it'll work out for you. Mm -hmm. So thank you so much. Thank y'all for letting me talk. You. Can I, I ask you something? Like yeah, aunt, the big auntie, the mama. Like when I hear young women talk, I, I just feel like I just feel so proud of y'all. I don't know what to say. So <laughs> I'm trying to make a little like, difference. I'm trying. Yeah, <laughs> Young young women that have sense are gonna gravitate towards you and love you. Young women <laughs> that want young women that want to be out here on Fru La La are gonna have an issue with you. That that's why I said there's just two very distinct sets of us at this point. And I have and I have come to realize it and accept it. And when I was younger, I was more naive and I didn't have a lot of experience with a multitude of people. And so I, I you know, I was like, no, no, it's not like that. No, it, it's like that, y'all. It's like that. And so Jessie is on the other side, right? She's in the set that wants to progress. She's in the set that's going to be successful. She's in the set that's going to create, you know, an amazing future for herself because yeah, she's, actually, she's actually out here seeking sound advice she's wise enough to say let me go and be around some women that have, have accomplished the things that i want to accomplish and let me actually take heed to the advice and so you know some of y'all be out here windmilling in these comments like i've seen some of the derogatory <laughs> comments y'all been making towards deshaun you know and i'm just like okay at the end of the day you can be in here windmilling for your life in these comments but when you close up this phone you still gonna be broke you still gonna have bad credit. You still not gonna be in the relationship that you want to be in. You're still gonna be in a bad mental state. You're still gonna be out here externally blaming everyone else instead of breaking cycles and taking accountability for things. And and what? Now, on top of that, you've possibly gotten blocked from someone that can actually give you good information that's going to impart, that can impart you, you right, so that you can get what you want in life. But because you felt bad because somebody told you the truth instead of lying to you, then you then you have no emotional regulation, so you lash out, right? And, let me and that's it. a that's a. Go ahead. <laughs> no, I, I, I mean it's a say, it's a thing that I, I see say, constantly. I, yeah, and I just want to say that I think that we are a perfect example of what can exist because I'm significantly older than you because you're in your 30s, right? How old are you? Ma'am, I'm yes, still in yes, my 30s. I just, I just turned 30 in February. Okay, so, so for all practical purposes, I'm old enough to be Ashley's mother, okay? I've taken her courses. I've learned from her. I've learned a lot from her. Okay, you're not that old. I would say maybe like a oh, like an auntie or big sister. And listen, I'm 38. So you ain't. I was okay, not quite, but I'm 53. Yeah, that's what I said. So I would say I would say not old, but definitely like in the big sister okay. category, okay. or maybe or maybe if you were a teenage mama. Okay. But then I I'll go with auntie. But my point is this. We can get on here, and for all practical purposes, I just started a coaching business. I mean, I could I could be the type of person to be like, no, she can't come on my live. No, I don't want her talking, blah, 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 and have this whole competition spirit. You know what exactly, I'm saying? Yeah. And that's what I see a lot of. But whenever I see her in my comment section, I'm always like, come on. There's no competition. y'all. So we have to get out of this mindset that everybody is like, we're scratching for, you know, chicken scratch. That's not what it is. When we all work together, what is it? The rising something lift all sails, a rising water lift all ship, some shit. Y'all, I don't know what the damn say, saying is, but you know what I'm saying? So we we really got to get in that. About. <laughs> you know, whatever the saying is, we got to work together. 
when you let go of that spirit of lack and that for one thing, I'm very clear about who I am and what I want in life. Ashley's very clear about who she is. Some of it overlaps, but it's okay. We're not in competition. You see what I'm saying? We're not in competition for men. We're not in competition for money. We're not in competition for followers because we both understand that what you need will come to you. You don't have to take it from somebody else. And so too many younger women don't understand that concept. And let me back that up because there are a whole bunch of old women on here that I done blocked their asses to because they don't understand that they also have work to do. And so it's important that like we all kind of come together I say that, but then I go to my, I probably can go to my comment section right now and I'm fat, ugly, old, hag, jealous, angry. You know, I'm a, I'm a pretty positive person, but I'm also a realist and the reality of the situation, we're not all going to come together. I wish, I wish that we would, but it's not like, it's, it's literally going to be just two sets of us. There's going to be a set of ninjas. And then there's going to be a set of forward advancing brown people. It, it just is what it is. And there's and those of us that want to come, it's like, hey, if you want to pick up what we putting down, you want to come over here and sit at the table with us, you welcome. Come on. If you want to be out here on this fru la la and run around, you know, sprinkle sprinkling and doing whatever else you're doing out in these streets then do that because I, I do it. I'm not going to lie. It agitate me. It agitate me when I see how these people come at you. And I'm like, yeah, I'm like, why are they coming at Deshaun like this? Literally, I have watched you give sound advice to people. I have watched you try and stop other people from making mistakes. I have watched you give free game and free advice to people. I have watched you uh, build other women up. Like I've watched you do all of these things. And the minute you say something that they don't like, like, right when initially we came in and you were talking about when I came in and you were talking about, you know, understanding, you understand your status, you understand your ranking, you understand what type of man is going to worship you and just love your dirty, stinky draws. Right. And I can see in the comments, they in here going crazy, going crazy on you. And I'm like, why are they mad at what Deshaun is saying? Like she is giving sound advice. If you want to be happy in life, listen to this. Is there an exception? Yes, but the reality is the majority of people in the comments are not the exception. It just is what it is. And I don't care. I know it makes I know it makes people feel good. You know what I mean? To think that they're the exception. I know that that makes you feel good, y'all. But if you really want to shift in your life, you have to be in reality and you got to get to the point where you can tell yourself the truth. And there is nothing wrong with it. Well, Rena, go ahead. Um, Raina? Mm -hmm. All right, I'm, I'm going to kick you off. You can come back in a minute if you want to. Um, the nursing nerd, that girl, um, who are you talking about? The one that's stealing all my content? She blocked me. The girl that uh stealing all my content and can't explain it because she's not smart enough, uh, she oh, blocked me. Girl, it's a it's another it's some black chick that's stealing all of my content and then she be trying to explain it, but she can't explain it because she's not smart enough. Oh my god. <laughs> so I'm a video about something and I'm like, ma'am, just go ahead and copy a bar for bar. Like, don't add your 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 spin on it because she was trying to talk about the bell curve. And I'm like, ma'am, if you if you didn't pay attention in school, <laughs> like you don't don't talk about the bell curve because y'all understand what it really means. So, and then she did another bit, like she just still in my content and I'm just like, but you're too dumb to talk about it good. Can I spirit uh, of, Oh, I'm sorry. No, go ahead. I, I, I'm, okay, so since I'm new to Deshaun, um, I follow Ashley, so I just be, you know, lurking until I get my coins up or whatever to join, you know, get mentored. So do you ask, are you also in like the same field as Ashley and like how how is your mentorship? Honey, I'm nowhere near where Ashley is. I just started coaching and let me bow down to her because I sent quite right, a few people yeah. to her. I'll be like, okay, help me with that. If you are a small product based business and you want to grow mm -hmm. your company from, and I don't even recommend that new people um let, uh, 
So and first off, I don't recommend anybody do this. So let me just start off with that. Then if you insist on doing it, I work with small product based businesses that want to grow their company between zero and possibly half a million dollars. And I really don't recommend that too many people go past half a million dollars because I like to say most of y'all are going to have what I call golden handcuffs, because if you are a product based business and you're not doing third party manufacturing and third party logistics, what comes with its own set of problems. Um, you're going to be saddled to your company. And as a matter of fact, I'm scaling back Southern Elegance because I'm tired of working all the time. And so I help people grow their company from zero to about half a million. But that's where I stop. So if you're interested in taking it to million, two million, three million or something like that, I recommend just going ahead and starting with Ashley, because once you get to a certain level with me, I'm going to make you stop. In fact, one of the first things that I do with all of my then tease is I make them say, what level do you want to live comfortably at? Because what ends up happening is even when you hit a million dollars in sales, the cost of running a million dollar company is astronomical. You need whole systems and whole teams and whole uh, peoples in place. And so when you get to a million dollars, that's when I was the most unhappy. And so I sit people down. And I say, hey, what is it that you want in life? What is it that you, you know, what are you trying to achieve? You see what I'm saying? And then we start working on growing your company from there. So if you want to go into wholesale, you know, I talk you through how to do that, which is one of the worst things a lot of people can do because those corporate accounts will eat your margins alive and then you end up extra poor. If you want to do it via social media, I take you through that. Um, so we, but. And, and just really honestly speaking, it's just a matter of which coach you would like to work with. Ashley is an, a lot nicer than I am. I'm an old lady. I ain't got time for a lot of bullshit. And if you're sensitive, I tell people don't come work with me because I'm going to just put it out there. Your branding is horrible and your photography is horrible. Like if you want to be in corporate, you, you know, you want to be in Macy's, but you took this picture with your iPhone. Like it just doesn't work like that. And sometimes that's a little bit too mm -hmm. harsh for people. So you just got to kind of figure out and talk to a bunch of different coaches and figure out, you know, what type of coach would you like to work with? Mm -hmm. I, yeah, I, I definitely, you know, just how you said it, I definitely do need that type of thing because I respond more to like something that's clear. I'm good on being clear about stuff and clarity. So if, you know. I, I, I like it straight, program. straight up. If my, if I'm, if yeah. I'm doing something bad, if I'm not doing the right thing, but like, now why is you doing that? And then yeah. I won't have it. You know? They're set up very similarly, I'm sure, because all the coaching programs are. Just look mm -hmm. into both of them and then figure out which one you feel like would work best for you. Well, see, and yeah. I differ from Deshaun because I feel like I would say that you probably actually need both if you're a physical product person. Yes, Deshaun has Deshaun has a lot of experience as far as like if you want to be retail, whether you are direct to consumer or you want to be put inside of a store and knowing what that looks like, how to find and contact those people, how to get your establishment together, how to run your logisticals. Um, if you want to work with, you know, multiple companies across the United States to help with the delivery, if you decide you want to work with, you know, some manufacturer or something or some chemist lab, right, and you want to so that they can whip it up for you, work with the packaging, those sorts of types of things. I'm a lot stronger on building up the audience and on the marketing side. Um, and so point. I tell people like on the, on the business structure, I'm not with the structure, I'm gonna make sure your taxes, your books right. I'm gonna make sure that your systems are in place. And when it's time to build a team, that's probably where I would step back in and say, okay, you wanna get to 2 million, 3 million, 10 million. Let me show you how to put together the team and the system. So I realistically would say both because I'm, you know, y'all know how I am. I'm gonna keep it a buck when it comes to like physical products and that product placement. That's an area that Deshaun is like super strong in. And when people come to me with physical products and they ask me, normally I will actually send them her way because it's literally only a handful of people that I will refer to that I know that they have legitimate businesses. So sometimes it's about you know like where you are and what you want to do and and Deshaun is right I tell people the same thing like you got to figure out like what does a happy life really look like for you 
Most people in here really don't want to be millionaires. Most people in here want financial stability. You want to be comfortable and you want to have the ability to have time freedom and not worry about how you're going to pay your bills. Most people want to have their family in a safe environment and don't want to have to deal, you know, worry about your basic, um, what was it, Maslow, on the hierarchy of needs. Most people don't want to have to worry about the base level of needs. That's, that's the reality of the situation. It is what it is. And you can still live that way and acquire your properties and get stocks and have insurance policies and get a trust and things like that you can pass down to your children. So um, that's why I said, you know, earlier when I was like, a lot of y'all don't even know what you really want. You just want what social media is telling you that mm -hmm. you want. You know, somebody had made a comment to me because they they didn't realize, they were like, God dang, you know, you got all the cars. And I was like, yeah, but I don't have these cars just to have these cars. I have these cars because they make me money. Now, even though that side hustle brings me over a million dollars a year there's a lot of stress that comes with it because it's a lot of dirty slimy shysty people in the auto industry i don't want to deal with it so i'm in the process of actually trying to liquidate those i'm probably going to bust down to where i just keep maybe like mercedes bmw lexus you know maybe jag stuff like that that people can rent and do those locally so do i like do i make a lot of money with those cars yeah they got better cash flow than a house but the headache that comes with it i had to go down to the police department this morning y'all because i have a man that i'm pretty sure he's committed insurance fraud with one of my cars and he's stolen one of them so literally and that's a whole hassle because i live in arkansas but the car was stolen out of atlanta so now the police here have to identify me so that way we can make the police to, so we can make the police report there right then you got to turn around and file it on your insurance and all this other stuff so does that company make a lot of people go well it, you know it netted you over a million dollars in profit yeah but i don't want the headache that comes with it i'm fine i will figure out another way yeah, to replace that you know that million dollars i would dare say most people don't want the work that comes with a million dollar company just whatever it is across the board. I don't care if it's digital products, because even with digital products, they're thinking that all they got to do is sit back and not do anything. No, you got to learn e-commerce on a whole nother level. Digital products, physical products, hair salon, whatever it is. I would dare say most people don't understand the level of work that comes along with functioning at that level, especially if you are single. You know, if you have a partner that can help alleviate some of the stress, but if you are a woman, more than likely you're going to get divorced. I mean, that's just the reality of it. And I don't think people understand exactly what comes, because I was looking at something that you said about when you hurt your back. I think I was in one of your lives and how you still had to work like and you still had to figure things out. Like, I don't think that most people understand the work that goes into this i just really don't think they have a realistic view of it they don't and like you said a few minutes ago the costs that come with running a multi-million dollar company some of y'all would faint if you saw how much i have to spend in a day and i'm not out here spending this on frivolous stuff y'all one of my companies the overhead is about one hundred and twenty thousand dollars a month on just one i have payroll i have to meet every other week whether i'm well <laughs> whether whether i'm happy whether i'm on a boat whether i'm on a moat whether i'm in this house because what i do directly affects 40 other people, you know, and so realistically, when it gets down to the responsibility of it, I'm not going to lie. You have to have a certain type of mindset, a certain personality trait. And I've seen people like Deshaun was saying, they get they get to that million dollars, but they burn out because they don't have the systems. They don't have the team in place. And for a lot of us of the diaspora type people or some of y'all in here could be indigenous. Um, but realistically, a lot of us are first generation when we start getting into six, six figure, seven figure, eight figure businesses. So we don't have like five generations of people. So we can't call up grandma or papa. We can't hit up auntie or uncle and say, who's the best tax compliance specialist that I can go to? Who's the best bookkeeper I can go to? I know that you've been working with people international in India or the Philippines or China or in Costa Rica to build up your team. What company do I work with for that? How do I 
I put together my training manual? How do I find the best talent here in the United States? Like y'all don't even think about it. You got a team like, do y'all have any idea how much the government charges me on the back end for my employees? Y'all be out here going bad on employers because they won't give you a raise. Well, we would love to give the money to you. But the government says that I got to pay them three hundred four hundred thousand dollars a quarter in income tax and, and employee taxes is right so i can have you as an employee so would i rather give that money to you absolutely but uncle sam says if i don't give it to him they gonna throw me in the pen like you know what i'm saying it's it's all this it's all this stuff that's going on on the back end like you said that people they do not realize and most people don't have the capacity for it and it's okay it doesn't mean that you're weak it doesn't mean there's something wrong with you just everybody like Deshaun was saying earlier you got to have your own lane and i've even told y'all like i'm getting ready to pair back like i had to ask myself i'm like girl do you really need 20 30 million dollars a year i do not and i don't plan on leaving arkansas i'll probably buy a couple homes maybe one in mexico one in ghana possibly one in costa rica or something like that but at the end of the day when it really like i'm tired of missing birthday parties and family gatherings i'm tired of having to take two or three flights in a week so I can come home and see my nephew's football game, you know, and then pop back to the airport four hours after that so I can meet whatever obligation. Y'all look on the front side and y'all like, what? They pay her $25,000 to come up there and speak for 30 minutes? Yeah, but I also had to catch three other flights because I got a stage here, a stage there, a pre-event, a post-event. Then I got to pay the taxes on the back side that came with it. Then I got to keep all of the drops in line. Like, it's a lot that's going on to get you to, you know what I mean? People just see the front side. They don't look at everything that's happening in the back end. And I had to work my behind off to get to a position where an organization would say, yes, we will pay $25,000 to have her come and grace our stage for an hour. But you're going to do this meet and greet over here for three hours too. You know what I'm saying? With the VIPs. But that didn't come easy, y'all. That came with a lot of work a lot of consistent work and discipline. If you can get past your own self, your own ego, one, say, you know what? I do want physical products. Let me let me pay Deshaun to get in this course because you got to drop your ego to do that. Because some of you don't think you know everything and you don't. You have, to, you have to honestly say, I don't know everything. Here's a woman that's where I want to be. Let me go and seek her advice. Let me go and seek her guidance. Then after dropping your ego, you're going to have to be willing to let we talking about learning. Let's talk about all the crap you got to unlearn. Because like Deshaun said, she keep it straight. So if you're a person that's super sensitive and you over here, ain't nobody going to be talking to me like that. Ain't nobody going to say, I don't like how she said. So now you cutting off your nose to spite your face. What she's told you was correct. But now because you don't like the tone that she delivered it to you in, now you want to reject it. And now you can't accomplish what it is that you want to accomplish. So that's what I'd be like. We be in our own way. We are our own worst enemies. And let me tell you, if they think a business person is going to be nicer than what I am, they are out of their mind. I remember one time I called a buyer and that man said, how did you get my number? And I was like, I'm sorry, sir. Click. I said, well, damn, I'm, I'm going to have to wait a couple of years before I try to get back into that store because I got his direct number. But I'm just like, if they think that business is soft, bi business people are ruthless. And you just got to prepare yourself for the no's, the embarrassment, the rejection, like especially when you are trying to get in, get with these corporate accounts because shelf space costs money. And I know plenty of people done got into these big um, department stores or regional chains and they had to buy that shit back. And so y'all don't even know about buybacks when you get into the store and then you're stuck on sale. Talk about it. Talk about it, Deshaun. Lord, this why when people come to me, I'd be like, you sure you want to get into a retail store? I'd be like, are you sure that's what you want to do? Girl, you better let them know. I didn't see people go bankrupt because of a buyback. So uh, I try to warn people and I'd be like, man, that's your space. Why are they going to give it to you? But you? You know, your photography don't even look. You, Your 
photos are not even professionally done. Like when they go to your social media, it doesn't look like a top tier brand. It literally looks like you're making it in your kitchen. Even if you are making it in your kitchen, which I was for a long time, nobody knew it. They assumed that I was a big candle brand just because of the presentation. You know, and a lot of times when you tell people what they're doing is not good enough, they just be upset, you know, so, but if they think I'm rough, man, let me tell you something, lose some money, lose somebody else's money. They're talking about, you know, where are they going to get money? Let somebody invest in your company and you are not making progress at the rate in which they think that you need to be making progress. They don't see any kind of return on investment. See how nice they are to you. So I'm just saying, I've, I've no, seen. Ma'am. Let, let me tell look here, you want some real stuff. You might be too real right now. I might be going over some people's heads. Y'all, and, and this is the thing, Deshaun, like, you probably get tired of me because I'm always in your comments. And I'm like, Gary, you not like that. Because I, when I see you, I don't see you as rough. I don't see you as ruthless. I see you as passionate. And I see you as someone that tells people the truth because you really want them to win. I've never, I, I feel like I have, I'm a pretty, I feel like I have pretty good discernment and I'm a pretty good judge of character. And I remember the first time I ever seen one of your videos pop up in my timeline. I was not like, oh, she rough. Oh, she rude. I was like, oh, I was like, she, be, she out here telling people the truth. That's somebody that really wants you to win. And this is, y'all, we got to stop upholding this BS in our community because it doesn't feel good when somebody tells you people that people that lie to you they may not want to hurt your feelings in that moment but they also don't want to see you win somebody that really, really loves you they're going to tell you the truth not because they want to hurt you not because they're trying to be cruel they are telling you because they know no one else has told you they know that you do not know and they want you to accomplish what what they want you to accomplish and sometimes the truth will tick you off when you first hear it sometimes the truth may hurt your feelings when you first hear it because we all have an idea in our brain of what we want things to be but the reality of the situation is what you want it to be does not change what it really is is people like Deshaun, in my opinion, are a blessing. You're a blessing because there's so many people, they would never ever get this information if they didn't run across your page. They would be out here paying $20,000 for some BS course, somebody telling them to go to Alibaba or Ally Express and find somebody with diamond reviews and pay an extra 10 cents and get white labeled but they don't know what was really in that candle or that product now years later you got a bunch of people suing you because your candles to put off a bunch of forever chemicals that's giving people cancer or tumors and they are some strange crap like that and now you out here responsible for all of this and you went to somebody and they didn't teach you to get actual business insurance that protects you against lawsuits so now somebody came and sued you now you out of business then you on the back end you the co-mingled your funds so now they're coming after your house they the took your little kids kids, toys and clothes and everything else. And you out here are popping in the streets all because you want to listen to somebody tell you, oh, it's easy. Just get on Alabama and Ally Express and you, you just white label. Now you out here pushing out the same thing that 60 other people pushing on TikTok and 5,000 other people pushing on Facebook and 170 of them pushing on Instagram, running ads to the same people. Stop it. I was just about to say that. How many people come to you, though, thinking that going viral on social media is easy? <laughs> also, can I um, add something that I felt like was something somebody else can relate to? Um, just going through this process and I had to realize I can't, I literally, I cannot do everything. But in my mind, I like learning. I like trying to see if I could do something. And then immediately after, once I see I could do it, I'm like... I, I could do it and then just don't touch it anymore. So I I felt like that hindered me in any business I started because I think it was just the excitement of wanting to know, can I can I make this? Or feeling good about being able to make that product or whatever I was going for at the time. And then just immediately lost passion. So I had to learn. I'm like, okay, it took me three months to learn how to sew a basic dress. Now, if I would have worked with someone, that could have took me like three business days to have that same dress or better. 
So which one is more important? That time and effort I put into that one dress, then I'm going to have to keep doing it or paying someone else who has the experience to get it done. So I'm like, okay, is this like an ego thing? Like, am I trying to just it's, have this thing like I make it? No, it's cultural conditioning. It's cultural conditioning. And that's why having a coach is really important because women in, in general, just women across the board, believe that they have to do all the things all the time. And women of color, doesn't matter what, you know, um, minority women are taught to be the mule of society. And so when you start handing things off and expecting other people to work for you and to serve you, it is often you have cognitive dissonance where you feel like you should be able to do it. I fell why, into this why trap. Are you resonating yeah. with me why, right now? Why I'm sorry. Why are you resonating with me so well right now? Because I feel like, yeah, deep down, it's like in my mind, I'm like, I have to, whatever I need to do, I have to do it myself. I have to make it happen and I actually have to do it, like do the physical thing of it versus doing what smarter people would do and just pay for that person. It's just cultural conditioning. And it's going to take you a while to get out of that mindset because you almost feel guilty when mm -hmm. you have other people doing stuff for you. Wow. It wasn't until yes. I really had a serious payroll that I was able to really embrace having people serve me. And even then, like at, at the end of the day, I'm a, I'm a servant leader. I'm like literally the example of servant leader. I think that I am here to serve my team. I make their lives better. You see what I'm saying? They create something for me, but I'm here to help in particular, because I only hire black women, I only have black women working for me because um, I live in a rural community and the job that I give them and the pay that I give them makes a serious difference in their life. But anyway, so I'm the epitome of servant leader. But I had a hard time initially making sure that people did what they were supposed to do because they served me. And it's hard to get. But then after I started firing them off, my block game and my fire game, block, fire, block. Fire. Hell, I learned how to block from fire, motherfuckers. I'm just saying, after a while, though, you get out of that. You you understand that people, the people that you have around you need to serve you. And then what happens after you say, um, you on my payroll, you got to, you know, do, your, do what the hell you're supposed to do. You're here to serve me and the company because that's what I pay you to do at these hours. You start looking at your personal life, too. And it'll make you reevaluate the people in your personal life because then you start looking at are they sucking your energy or are they giving you energy? And so, so you slowly come out of that mindset and only have people around you that serve your greater good. Mm, okay. So, yeah, I mean, for some reason inside of me, it just feels like even having the privilege to be up here and speaking with y'all is like, I already feel the change. Like, I know I said I was going to do it before, but it's like now that I'm speaking it out and being amongst you guys, it's just like confirmation that I'm going in the right direction. So I feel a lot better about okay, it. Listen, I'm I about thought to tell I was you crazy. Something, I'm like, I'm crazy for listen, just jumping out. I'm about to tell you something. Just listen, I'm about to tell you something. This is going to be on a whole nother level because I, I, was, I was a math major. So math is my first thing, okay? But I'm going to make this really, really simple. Time is an illusion, okay? Space is an illusion. Everything is happening at the same time. Every possible scenario that you can choose to live is happening right in this moment. You have to make up your mind about the reality that you want to exist in. and then put into action what you need to do to literally shift from this reality into another reality. There are an infinite number of realities that exist, okay? The past and the future, totally irrelevant. Those things don't exist. The only thing that exists is right now. If you get your mind right, you can literally shift the reality that you live in. And so what is happening now is the beginning steps of you shifting your current reality. You're going to feel cognitive dissonance. Your brain is literally going to reject this information for a while because it feels uncomfortable. So you're going to have to keep the thought process that you want to do something different and something different is going to happen for you. 95% of the thoughts that you had today, you had yesterday. 
and you will have tomorrow. To change your current existence and shift into a new reality is to change what is on your mind. So just take this information and hold it and you will literally shift from this reality into another one. And depending on how strong your intention is, that shift can be a slow shift or it can be immediate. I went from doing a hundred thousand dollars a year to a million with my company because of a mindset shift. I literally went from one reality into another reality. I went from being nobody to being on national TV. And I've been on a whole bunch of shows and interviews and all kinds of stuff. But it started with a thought process. So shift your thinking. It's going to shift your reality. All right. That's you all I need. Oh, my gosh. You Thank you so much. Sean, God dang it. <laughs> right. Am I lying, Ashley? You I, that's all I needed. That is all. I meant to reprogram y'all. It's oh my gosh, it's so much on my mind all the time, and um, I'm just like, okay, I don't even. Sometimes I feel like I get stuck inside of my mind, and then I'm like overthinking situations. But I feel like you know what? I've done that for majority of my life, and I'm still, I'm still like around the same area. So. Let's try it from try it from a different perspective. Let's see if I I, I can do this. And I, I'm very confident about it. You know, I saved up, I got my place and everything, like everything's good. So it's just about now looking at the things I'm gonna have to return back home to. And um, hopefully I'm sorry, I don't mean to interrupt. Imposter syndrome is just a lack of experience. And so whenever people start talking about imposter syndrome, that wasn't even meant for us. OK, that that wasn't even meant for minorities. It wasn't meant for women. And I'm not even going to get into the, the all of the politics. Just know that imposter syndrome is just a lack of experience. When you get the experience, the imposter syndrome goes away. And so the problem is a lot of minorities don't have the solid foundation going into whatever it is because we have been traditionally locked out of those positions. The moment you get into those positions and you get the experience, you will realize that as a black woman in particular, you're usually the smartest one in the room for a lot of reasons because nothing has been handed to you and you've had to work extra hard for it. You will realize that the people that you thought where the gurus are a bunch of dummies and you're actually smarter than them. But that comes with experience. So imposter syndrome is just a matter of you being a rookie. That's all it is. Being an apprentice. The moment you become an expert at whatever that thing is, that imposter syndrome and you need time and energy. 10,000 hours. OK, let's be clear about the number. 10,000 hours to become an expert. When you get your 10,000 hours, there's no such thing as imposter syndrome. It, it will 100 percent go away because when I show up in the rooms, I show up just like this. I don't care. Red lip, um, you know, just looking like this. Most of the time talking like this. And a lot of times they're looking at me like, why is she here? And then I'd be like, Google me. And then I start talking and they go, oh, that is why she's in this room. And so you don't have to compromise your standards. You don't have to compromise who you who you are and how you exist. You just got to be knowledgeable with what you do. Imposter syndrome will go away. Trust me. Yes. The only way oh to make gosh. it go away is to do it. Period. That's it. Now look here. This is what I'm gonna say. While y'all out here was mad with what, what Deshaun was talking about earlier, you see what I'm saying? This the this the truth. So don't be mad when she tell you that you look like an ogre or like Barbara the Builder, okay? Because realistically, you out here saying that you're trying to get kept, you're trying to get chose. And she trying she trying to tell you how to get chose now. You see what I'm saying? Maybe they be selective because everybody in here, yes, yes. Maybe the truth is the truth all the time. It don't matter how you feel. The truth is the truth, period. And I ain't never paid no bills. I ain't never, my, my ex-husband still pay all the bills. And see, that's the part. You know what I'm saying? And so I'm literally telling women what they need to hear and they still mad. And then they go, but what about you? You ain't got a man. Ma'am, I had a man for 22 years and I made the choice. I'm like, okay, we, we ain't got to do this, boo. Well, we do not have to do this. But what? guess what you got to do? He paid the bills then. He pays the bills now. 
paying the bills now is the important part because he's going to pay the bills when you laying beside him and giving up some kitty cat. But if he's going to pay the bills when you ain't in that house no more. Now, when you can figure out how to get a man to do that, that's you winning in life. I could shut down Southern Elegance, shut, shut down coaching and still be a woman of leisure. Most of y'all will never get to that level because you don't listen. Let me tell you, they out here hunting for hamburgers, and it's ridiculous. Some of them not even getting a hamburger, but they out here hunting, and then one of and they swear the the excuse people go, oh well, these younger guys, y'all, it is it is not, it is it is not men and women. We are wired how we are, period. At the end of the day. You got to be you got to be able to heed to wise counsel, as the elders would say. And I'm telling y'all this, you look at someone, okay, and you look at someone that is there. And even if you can't mentor directly under them, sometimes you mentor from afar and you learn the thought behaviors, you learn the patterns, you learn the insights, you learn the perspectives, and that's how you start to to the other reality it is what it is they got mad at me the other night because i was talking you know that you know all that mess went down between uh sprinkle sprinkle and spiritual whistleblower right and they came in and they asked me and i was just like look i was like at the end of the day most of them ain't even savage enough to live the way that she was seven teach that's the truth most of them don't want to be most of them most of them don't want to be out here dealing with no wrinkled phallus if they see an old ball drop, they gonna cry, right? Because she, because she, she, she teach you go get you an older man. She, that's what she teaches. She teaches. She don't. She teach. And then when you look at the life that she's living, you know what I'm saying. It's not like she out here gallivanting on yachts and boats and planes and you know trains and all of that. And no disrespect, like she doing all right. But I feel like if I'm gonna follow that pathway or that pattern, baby, I want the most. You understand? I'm I'm out here. I want everything. If I'm if I'm gonna be with a man and I'm not with a man for love, right? Because in here earlier you were talking about some women married for love. I'm the woman that married for love. And my husband, though, he does well. He does very, very well. But at the end of the day, I, I pray that God would never let him get to a point where he lost everything. But if he did, I would still stick and stay with him because I got my own stuff over here. So I'm going to be able to keep on rolling. No, no, matter, no, matter, no matter what no, happens, no, whatever no, go no, down, no, whatever no, go no, down no, in life. Hold no, on, Ashley. Hold on. Hold on, because I was talking about this earlier, talking about struggle love and how you're going to struggle with love or with money. And the problem with when you just are transactional, when the money run out, baby, what's going to happen to you? And too many of these women do not have a contingency plan. You, on the mm -hmm. other hand, married for love. He, he probably don't make as much as you do. That's just the reality of it. But he does well for himself. But if anything happened to your money or his money, your relationship will be strong enough that you can get the money back. Because I tell people all the time, yep. if you made it one time, you can make it, again. make it again. But if you don't have a partner, a serious partner, when that money gone, the relationship gone, and sometimes you can never come back and get to the level, back to the level where you were. But they don't well, let's talk about the other. Let's, but let's talk about the other. Let's talk about the other thing that they don't want to talk about. The reality of the situation: if you're with a man and you're coming in and you're just like, okay, I have my pretty face and access to my body. That's what I have to offer you. Well, what happens when he doesn't feel like you're pretty enough anymore? And he wants a younger model because he wasn't attached to you for love, right? He was attached to you because you were a trophy. What happens when you don't want to be in line anymore with how he wants you to be in line with? And heavens forbid, like you said, what if that man gets sick? What if your old sugar daddy croak out? What you going to do now? Because you haven't built anything else. So it's really wild to me. I feel like it's super dangerous for a woman to go into a situation and say, well, I'm just going to be pretty and I'm just going to be in the house and I'm going to let him take care of everything. And there are so many women that have come out and they've spoken publicly about how they made that mistake and how it was the most horrible thing that ever happened. And some of them were with men that woke up one day and decided that they didn't want them anymore. And they were literally out here on the streets. Them and their children were struggling. They went from living a comfortable life to having to go to a food bank for people living in a one bedroom or 
or even worse in a homeless shelter in a car because she had no marketable skills because she was resting on I'm pretty and he's going to take care of me. As a woman, you got to make sure that you're in a position where you can take care of yourself. You don't know what's going to happen. We all hope for the best. You know what I'm saying? But rea but the reality is, what if, what if you with this man balling in the company? The company that he was working for, he was a C-level executive, that company fold. Right. Remember, y'all remember like in 2008 and 2009 during um, that recession and there were all of these high earning people unaliving themselves because they couldn't take the pressure and they did not know how they were going to make it because they had lost their money, um, especially once the stock market crashed. All those companies went out of business. Y'all remember they had to, the government had to come in and bail out Wall Street and all of that stuff. There were when you are in a position for the company, y'all, and you making six hundred, seven hundred thousand, two million million, three million, ten million a year, you can't go back out and get a regular job. It don't matter how many yards you cut, it don't matter how many toilets you scrub, it don't matter how many burgers you flipping at McDonald's, it's gonna take you a minute to rebound. And if you do not have your money set up right, right? And like realistically, a lot of these, a lot of those types of men have the personality traits. They have defined themselves based on what they earn and based on yep. their position and the minute that it changes they change and now your man that was sweet and kind to you is mean and horrible to you now all of a sudden right or or he may jump up and say he going to the store to get some milk and never come back we ain't gonna like it's all kinds of he may come in one day and just say you know what i think you old and wrinkly and i make a lot of money and i deserve to be with somebody that's young and firm like it's so many things that can happen out here in these streets you can't never be in a position where at the end of the day Hey, if somebody leave you, you out of there, or if that money dry up, it's over for you. Somebody said, keep God first. Ma'am, let me tell you, there are plenty of preachers that's done left their wives, deacons, deaconesses, uh, the bishops, and everybody else cheating and fornicating and leaving their wives. Keeping God hunting first all, is not going to be hunting, 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 all of, hunting all of the parishioners. <laughs> okay, so let, let's not even, like, I, I tell people all the time, we're going to have a real conversation on, in here. We're going to have a real conversation. You can pray, you go all to the prayer, the prayer closet, whatever y'all call it, all you want to. And he's going to be slinging that knee up and down the pulpit and you're going to be sitting up there in the first queue embarrassed because he done screwed everybody behind you. So we just going to keep it real here. Like we're going to keep it real. We're not seeing it too many. We're not seeing the movie too many times. And black women in particular are always taught to just pray. Yeah. Your reward is in heaven. Just pray and forgive mm -hmm. them. Forgive them. Forgive them. That's the other part. I'm going to forgive you already right, with this crying thing. Let me stop before TikTok. Let me stop. <laughs> <laughs> but this but this the thing like a lot of black women aren't even taught right because once you get into the bible and you start going yourself it, you got to pray and act they go hand in hand like manifestation is very biblical you have to be you have to act you got to shift your thinking and when you shift your thinking you got to shift the behaviors so if you out here just praying you're like nine times out of ten you're not gonna get it like i remember praying and i was like okay god said i'm not gonna be in this wheelchair forever but i still had to take the actions i still had to go through physical therapy i still had to cut myself off the medication i still would have to push myself you know what i mean to try and get from one step to 10 steps to 20 steps to a quarter of a mile a day i still would have you know what i'm saying like i still had to try and build up my back muscles and my core muscles and all of this stuff to you know counter the fact that i'm missing part of my spine and all this other foolishness and flim flam i couldn't just sit there and pray and say oh god it's me your child ashley and i'm coming because i'm in need of a divine healing and i know that you're going to do it for me but i'm just going to lay right here i'm not going to take any actions at all to move towards recovery it don't work that way and most Queen of the Lisa time you're right without action a bunch of people pray without a action lot people, a lot of people. most people unfortunately most people 
I would dare say most people, because I'm trying to tell you, if you want a six figure, six feet, six pack man, most of y'all ain't willing to, to do what it takes to get one. Y'all not willing. Y'all not about that life. Y'all are not about that life. Y'all not going to be in the gym. Y'all not going to be eating all that kale. Y'all not going to be shutting the hell up. Y'all not going to be showing up in them so, so, social circles, dealing with women talking down to you and treating you poorly, showing up at corporate events. Most of y'all not going to do what it takes to hold on to one of them. Y'all just want one. But y'all not. It's like having an expensive car. Y'all want it, but you ain't you ain't going to do what it, you need to do to keep up the maintenance because half the time you can't afford it. You can't do it. You don't even have it in you. So a lot of people just want with no action. Let me tell you this, when you said to shut up, that's what's going to get most of them. I've told a bunch of women they don't have the temperament to be around those type of men. Because this is the thing, a man that's like that, especially if he's first generation, meaning he built that on his own. This man has learned how to manipulate energy and the odds in his favor. And he is he is outbeat every system that was meant to oppress him. He has outpaced every challenge. And this is not a man that knows how to take no for an answer. And that does not just cut off in the business world. He takes that attitude everywhere in life with him. I have dated tons and tons and tons of these men. Hell, if I'm keeping a buck, I'm married to one of them men. Corey don't really, he's not rude to me or disrespectful to me, but I notice he does handle me um, a little bit more gentle than he does, right? But with in other circumstances, but even with me, he don't ask me to do stuff. Corey just commands stuff. I be tickled. I be laughing. I be like, he be like, what are you laughing at? I be like, you do not know how to ask for anything. He just commanded. He just speak it like it's just supposed to exist. A lot of women would get triggered by that. That's a, that's the truth. You you start if you start if you say I want a powerful man, you got to understand these men are powerful all the time. It does not cut off. That they don't sit here and say I think I'm going to do this or I'm going to try. No, oh, I'm going to do it. I don't hear him say I'm going to try nothing. He just says I'm going to do blank. Period. And y'all got to understand <laughs> sometimes <laughs> if you don't want they ain't asking for, for permission for shit. They're going to just show up and tell you what's going to happen. And you better figure out like how to maneuver around it. Like I, I'm dating one of them now, and I just be like, "Sir, um, can, what what is really happening? Half the time I don't say shit. Let me be honest. I just shut right. it up. I don't like, say I nothing. I just, I just I just shut up. I'll be like, okay. Be like, okay. <laughs> And some okay. of y'all don't want to hear this, but it's, okay. you keep it a buck. And this is why they like smart women, though, because they will ask your opinion about things or they will ask for your insight and they will actually take that into consideration. But at the same time, if it's something that they really want to do, they don't give a flying fart what you think about it or what it is. They like Deshaun said, they're not going to come and ask you. They just going to do it. That that is what that is what it is. And realistically, you have to know if you're going after a man that has that type of personality. Because remember, this is part of why this man has become super successful. He don't know is not in his vocabulary. Whatever no, whatever rejection, he's going to find a way around it. If there's something he wants to do, if it's that that is what it is. Period. I remember asking Corey, we we probably would like on maybe like our fourth or fifth date right and um i was i still i wasn't monogamous with him yet okay so i was still dating other men and i had had this inter interesting interaction with another one of the fellas that i was dating and he had basically said something about um like you know my hair and makeup and the jewelry and all of this stuff y'all know i'm a little bit on the extra side honey i'm sparkly okay i like being sparkly and i asked Corey, i said i said well do you have an issue you know with with you know the way that i dress or the way I carry myself. He said, nah, he said, I like that shit. He said, why would I want to be with some, he said, why would I want to be with someone that any man figured he could have them? He said, you look expensive. I like it when you put that shit on. He said, the only man that's going to have an issue with that is a man that can't afford you. I said, well, okay then. Bloop, that was it. Just yeah. like just like that. So when y'all be out here listening to these little dudes and they be telling y'all you shouldn't be high maintenance and don't look this way and don't put the nails on and don't wear your earrings and baby, you wear what you want to wear. You do your hair how you want to do your hair. You put on your makeup how you want to do how you make up. And if you look too high maintenance, that is a sign to men that cannot afford you to not approach you. And that's okay. 
Because I got one down. He'll be like, oh, why your nails not done? And I'll be like, I got to type. Like, I, I got a lot of stuff to type. Like, he don't care. You, you need to go get your nails done. And by that, he will leave the money for me to go get my nails done. And that means go get your nails done today. <laughs> like, the next yeah. time I see you, your nails need to be done. And I'm just like, that is such like a a small thing but that's how those types and the girl that was saying what is it about me that looked like barbara the builder i felt like saying because you look homely because you look yeah. you do not look like a man needs to spend any time or energy upkeeping you whereas when a man approached me i'm in a jag before they even approach sir can, can you afford to make this jag payment we're not even going to talk about the mortgage. We're just going to talk about this JAG payment. If you can't afford to pay this, like we don't need to have no kind of conversation. If you ain't got about a thousand dollars extra per month for this car payment, we don't need to talk because we're not on the same level. Not that I need him to pay it, just that he needs to understand where he's coming in. And mm -hmm. I think a lot of women don't hold men to that standard and it ain't got to be a jag it can be a honda it, hell it could be a use whatever it is it doesn't matter but when they approach you do they feel like they have to do something to keep you and for a lot of y'all they ain't got to do nothing to keep you in fact yep. you're gonna be 50 50 and while he taking his 50 and spending it on another woman and on top of that, this is the thing, and a lot of women, I don't think, understand this, but with if you are this man's woman, he feels like you're a representative of him. You are his representation. So if you're out here looking homely and downtrodden and busted or whatever, that's not a good representation of him, period. It just is what it is. A lot of men like things, including women, that they feel like are rare. They like the fact that they're with somebody that they feel like a lot of other men covet or wanted to be with. And so this is why you'll see a lot of times like these types of men and all the women look differently, but they all keep themselves up. And it, right, not, not that they all have the same face or the same makeup or the same body, but they all keep themselves up. Whether they wear long nails or little crystals or they wear natural nails, they're going to have a manicure. They're going to keep their feet together. You're not going to see them running around looking ashy. They're not running out here in public in bunnets. They're not. You know what I'm saying? They're, they're not. If they wear their natural hair, it's, it's going to stay done. It's going to stay styled. It's going to stay neat. If they out here in a wig or a weave, it's not. You know what I'm saying? It's going to be laid to perfection whatever they got going on for the most part those women they keep themselves up whether they on the natural or they the suit or they want to be out here you know transforming and and they don't have to come level but whatever it is they keep themselves up and there's a certain circle of men they know that they're not going to be taken seriously if their woman looks a certain type of way and this is the reality of the situation. I think women forget that sometimes men are very concerned with impressing other men or their status around other men. And listen, so, I, you know, I joke. Well, I, it's not a joke. I joke about it. But I just tell everybody, I live in a town. It's 4,000 people here. It's a very small town. I'm a very big fish in a small pond. And I'm single. I stay here. Like, I, I why would I move? I'm, I'm the catch here. You know what I'm saying? Now, granted, the bait ain't, you know, millionaire bait. But at the end of the day, I'm the catch here. The men think that I I am the epitome of what they would like in a partner. So I'm just like, why would I go anywhere else when I understand that my value is very valuable here? So I stay here. I date here. I, when I date somebody here, they're like they happy as fuck now i only dated one person here but all of the other people lived other places i got tired of long distance driving and all of that stuff and to your point dating the corporate guys i was just like i don't feel like it's showing up like this i'm tired of it. i'm too old and i'm tired of the facade and all of that and i got more money so i don't have to so but at the end of the day what i offer here what a man feels like is valuable here I'm like, I'm just going to stay right over here, buy me a nice little country boy, and we're going to buy them about 10, 20 acres in a few years, you know, get married when I'm ready to do it again. 
give me a couple of acres and chill. That's what we're going to do. And I'm going to live a great little life, great little country life. I ain't going to be going to Nordstrom's because we ain't got one. Hell, we don't even have an apartment. But I'm going to be happy as fuck doing some real basic shit where these same women that are in my comment section right now telling me I don't know what I'm talking about still going to be single looking for a man. I'm just saying. This the thing. A lot of the this the thing. First of all, you can go to a lot of areas and men will find you desirable. That's number that's number one. I wanna make sure I make that clear for everybody that's listening. Um, because it I'm not gonna lie to y'all. Your genetics helps you and some of us got genetic advantages that other people don't, and that's okay, because everybody has some type of advantage. You just gotta figure out what yours is and play it up. But number two, your looks will get the introduction. But y'all, you got to have some type of personality. That's what's going to keep that guy around. Your looks are going to go so far. <laughs> they right, they'll, they'll get you hello. They might get you to the front door, but they know they're definitely not going to get you in the room and keep you in the room. So having a personality, having um some type of education. And when I say education, y'all, I'm not talking about formal education as far as a degree. I mean, you need to know about current affairs. You need to know about some, you may not have to know everything about politics, but you should know somewhat what's happening in your community or in your legislature or in your state. You, um, If you're going into a real estate convention to meet somebody, well, God dang it, you better learn a little bit of something about real estate. You ain't got to know everything, but you need to know something. So work on educating yourselves as well so you can carry on conversations charm and your energy will get you a long 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 way i know girls that realistically a lot of y'all would look at some of these women and y'all would be like how did she get that guy and it's because of her personality it's because she has the ability to carry a conversation and above all, you can if you can make a man feel good about himself when he's around you, he will be addicted to you. You do not have to do witchcraft. You don't have to do spells. Literally, just having the ability to make that man feel good. Men like to feel good the same way women like to feel good. So women that are good at making men feel good, you wouldn't normally notice that she can have whatever man she wants, no matter what she, you know what I'm saying? Like... She may she may not get all the heads to turn in the room, but you don't need all the heads to turn. You just need one of them to turn. <laughs> that, that's it. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna address a couple of comments. Self mastery solutionist says, um, asking the question, "Are you qualified for who you desire?" will put you in check quickly. No, it won't, because a lot of women they will say yes, they deserve something, and they ain't nowhere. They ain't got the credentials to even begin to even look at it. It's like going to one of them stores that got the man at the door that don't even let their ass in, but they swear they can afford everything in it. They're just like that in the dating world. So nope. And I have told plenty of men, honey, you ain't got the face credentials or the financial credentials to be in my comment section. People are straight up delusional. Jay Lovely says, do y'all do dating no, apps? I did for a hot time. second. What? What'd you say? I said, not, I said not the face card got declined. <laughs> declined. Uh, she said, do y'all do dating apps? I used to, but I'm a big, um, I, a motherfucker got to set my soul on fire. So I got to meet you. We got to have some flirting. It's got to be some banter back and forth. I remember one time I met a dude and I was like, can I touch your beard? Man, we dated for a year after that just because I touched his beard. I felt like electricity when I touched that beard. I said, what the hell? What? what? I think I'm in love. You can't get that on dating apps. And that's half of y'all problem because y'all swiping, just swiping. There's no connection. There's no energy. There's nothing, no conversation. No, nothing is happening in the damn real world. You got stupid ass checklists and then they check all the things, you check all the things and then y'all go out and you try to force a relationship when in re reality, y'all shouldn't even be talking to each other. That's what happens on dating apps. Um, so <laughs> witchcraft is spells. I, somebody said, I can't stand dating apps. Okay. That's what that, oh, well, that's I, what I, meant the by my comments. Just, okay. It's overwhelming to me. So, and I and I think if because I've married a few couples that met on dating apps. Um, I do think if you do a dating app, you probably need to do a paid app. And I'm talking about something that has a significant fee, so it can create a quality um, of partner. 
for me, the dating app was overwhelming. It was like another job. Like the, um, I couldn't handle the amount of messages. So strange fact about me, I hate mail. Um, I don't know what it is about the mail. Mail gives me anxiety. And for whatever reason, even on one little person, I get a lot of mail and I despise it. Like I will have piles and piles and piles of mail and I go through it like once a month. What goes into the shred pile? What needs to be handled? Same thing with emails. Y'all, I got over 900 text messages on my phone right now. Some of y'all, some people be frustrated when they text me because I don't text back right away. A lot of people try and communicate with me. I have hundreds of DMs that come in every day. So I, so when I tried the dating app, having all of those messages, it was just overwhelming. It was like another job. I was like, this is not for me. I'm like you, Deshaun. I want to meet you in person. I want to vibe off of your energy. I want to see if I feel a little something, something, you know, and I know that that means realistically, I could be cutting myself off from lots of really great men, but thank the Lord. It shook out all right for me. You know what I'm saying? And I, that got me a good person in my life and I was able to connect with him in person. But um, yeah, the, day, the dating apps, it, it was a challenge for me. It was just too much. And I just didn't like them. I, I, I would meet them in person and then I'd be, I, I my, my tolerance, at 52, my tolerance level is like zero. For men, it's like zero. I have zero tolerance for men. When they talk about decentering men, I, I never centered a man. The only time I center a man is if I like him and he's my man. Then my whole world will revolve around him. And that's another thing that a lot of y'all don't do. You know what I'm saying? Y'all don't y'all don't know how to make what what Ashley was saying about making a man feel good. But all the shit that I talk over here, I shut the hell up around my man. Like he is amazing. I, I absolutely enjoy being around him. I think that he is the smartest thing. I love talking to him. And so when I'm around him, nothing like this. I talk shit to these people, these dudes, because I could care less. But around him, I'm soft. I'm feminine. I'm like, what you want? He can come in right now. This this call, over. I don't care. I would be goodbye. Goodbye. Yeah, if anybody ever been on here when he called, I'd be like, oh, the end. I don't care what I'm doing. The end. Not talking to y'all no more. Like some of y'all just I I I I couldn't do the app because I that's how I am about a man. So I don't know. I don't know. I, like it's I said, because, I'm an old lady. And I, go ahead. But you know, you always saying you're an old lady, but this is the thing. A lot of the younger girls be out here trying to reject just what works because they've been lied to, y'all. You've been bamboozled. A lot of these, look, I'm finna say it. Deshaun ain't gonna say it, but I'm gonna say it. A lot of girls that y'all be listening to their podcast or y'all follow on here that you're taking dating and relationship advice from, they are ladies of the night, okay? They are professional 304s, and that's why everything is transactional, okay? The second thing, let's keep in mind, a lot of people that are following these people and saying, oh, I love everything they're saying, you don't look like them. That's a that's another, that's a, that like... When I said it, be, oh, Lord, you saw what happened be, when I said it. Being that was a, a day. I said it's, it's, what I said. I said she likes skin with long hair, and you ain't got that, and you a little stupid on top of that. I said what I said, girl. My ooh we. I had to delete the video. Like, this Lock is the people. thing when it <laughs> when it comes to attraction, though, right? Like, okay, understand, y'all. Everyone is attractive to someone, okay? But there are some people on the planet Earth. There are more people that will find them attractive, okay? So everyone's attractive to someone, but there are some people that are attractive to a few people. There are some people that are attractive to a good amount of people. And there are some people that are attracted to a whole lot of people, okay? If you are in the category of you're attractive to a whole lot of people, um, I like to call those people universally attractive, okay? That means different cultures um, across different continents, different countries, different races. People would still find you beautiful or pretty, right? They will put you into the attractive category Category, you normally can do a lot of things that someone that may not be attractive to a lot of people can do. And that's the reality of the situation. So y'all be out here taking this advice from these girls that are professional night workers 
and they have a certain look, a certain aesthetic that they have mastered because the type of men that they want to deal with, look, that's what they like. And so the advice that they're giving you in the real world application isn't going to work for you. And I'm not saying that to be discouraging. I'm saying that because I want no, you to win. You. I want you to have what you want. No, I don't. Discourage them. <laughs> Somebody needs to discourage them. Because then they, they walk around delusional. Somebody needs it's, to discourage them. It's, it's, just, it's just the reality of the situation. And so then y'all are frustrated because y'all are passing up on really good men, but you feel like that good, you feel like you're above him, right? Or you feel like he's beneath you. But really the situation is y'all are in the same league. And so if you can find a man that especially one that wants to be faithful to you, okay, that that's huge because a lot of y'all don't want to be in poly relationships, okay? So you find a man that want to be faithful to you, a man that's honest, a man that's going to be committed to you, that's going to be consistent. He ain't going to be taking you down through a whole bunch of challenges. He ain't got no string of baby mamas, okay, and out here creating single households left and right and messing up kids and turning them into messed up adults. You find a man and he say, baby, I want to do the best that I can to make make your dreams come true. If that means I got to get another job, if that means that I got to work hard, if that means I got to get a promotion, I got to go back to school, if that means I got to be out here smoking ribs, you know, on the weekend or whatever and so whatever it is I got to do to get to you because when a man is crazy about you I told I already told y'all my papa said make sure that that man like you more than you like him and whatever it is that he got to do to get to you he will and y'all are passing up on the men Lord, that will do whatever they got to do to get to y'all because y'all are like oh he's beneath you he's not beneath you like that's really on the level of where you are and that doesn't and it doesn't mean it's a bad thing you know what i'm saying like for instance i know if i wanted to go and get an old rich wealthy white man if that's what I wanted, that was my goal, that was my ambition, y'all, I would have to lose like 100 pounds to do that. And I'm aware of that. Now, they, some of them will see me and flirt with me. Some of them may fetishize, you know, a plus size queen. They may want to smash it or smell it or something like that. But at the end of the day, if I want to get one that I wanted to lock down into marriage and I wanted him to put me in his will, okay, and I wanted him to forsake everybody else for me, on the cool, I would literally have to drop like a hundred pounds, maybe even a hundred and twenty, because they like them very slim. They got a real specific body type that the majority of them like. Okay, and I would be out of the running because I'm yellow. When y'all see most of the older, wealthy white men is with black women, they be with cocoa sisters. Okay, they be with a bad, bad brown bone that's model esque looking. They be with a sister that's undeniable. Okay, that she is from the motherland. They they like that that's exotic to them okay that's the look that they like if they are going to be with a black woman so realistically if i was in competition trying to get one of them i'm going to have a hard time getting him because one it, because of my because I'm fluffy okay like i said he may be one of the little fetish he may want to hit it but he ain't going to want to keep it and what i got working against me i don't have as much melanin as some of my other sisters most of those older white wealthy men they when they go get a black woman they get a black they get a sister that's undeniable so they don't want no light bright they don't want no caramel. They don't want no brown bone. They want a cocoa to chocolate. That's what they want. And they want her to have beautiful features like a model that hits the runway. So, and again, this is not me devaluing myself. I have great self-worth. I have great self-esteem. But at the end of the day, I'm honest. And I know, you know what I mean? I know where I shine. Yep. Okay. Tell me y'all gotta know where you shine. A couple of things. You were talking about how two people should come together. Let me tell you something. This is what I see with young black women and young black men. All of y'all on the damn Titanic, and the shit is sinking fast. And rather than working together, the damn it untied a lifeboat. Y'all sitting somewhere bickering about bullshit that don't matter. And at this point, I'm just like, all of y'all can drown. This don't make no sense because I done got my man and we done got the life around and we off somewhere looking at the boat sink and we trying to tell y'all what y'all need to do and y'all arguing. That's number one. So just stay on that Titanic. Number two, we're not calling nobody a narc in here because half the time they're not narcissistic. They just don't like you. And rather than packing your bags and hitting the bricks, you stay for the abuse. 
That's really what it is. They are not narcissistic. They may have some narcissistic tendencies. And like I said, I dated a certified narc. He had the paperwork from his psychiatrist. That's a whole nother life. Okay. Y'all have not, y'all just want to be calling people names and you, you're not basing it on anything but your hurt feelings. I'm just saying. Now, self, um, who is this over here that I don't let in here? Somebody I don't let. Ma'am, go ahead and speak. I can't read the whole name. It's, it's self mastery solution. It's oh, my name go. is yes, Venus. My name is Venus. That's fine. That's Hi, that's Hi, beautiful Ash. How are you, love? Um, first, let me um say thank you so much for having me up, and um, thank you actually for pulling me in here uh, because I sincerely, infinitely appreciate wisdom, and and your vibe is so authentic, Miss D. I absolutely love it. Please don't ever change. Please don't ever change because the medicinal truth is what we need. And I always say the undesirable truth is medicinal, right? It's going to benefit us in so many ways. But my comment that you mentioned earlier, um, she is, she is absolutely amazing. I'm, I'm so grateful I connected to her energy. Um, the comment that I made earlier is exactly what you both were speaking about. Um, many of us are not qualified when we're speaking about going after these high value, high earning men and women, we're not qualified for the men and women who we actually desire. So that's what I meant by that comment, you know? Um, so just first, that's why I originally came up here just to clarify, because I'm sometimes the context can get lost in the comments, but also just to continually be in the vibration because you speak a lot of what I teach. And so, of course, it's relatable. And I'm like, okay, y'all both giving it. Ashley is already familiar with me. So I'm just grateful. Um, infinite gratitude. Thank you. Thank you for joining. Thank you for joining. And I tell people all the time, y'all ain't got to agree with me. I love having a good debate, but you got to come in with some facts and it's got to be rooted in logic. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because too many times we get up here and talk about how we feel versus the, the, the reality of the situation. I want a rich man, but the reality of me finding one here out of this dating pool, and I mean, this is a kiddie pool. It was smaller than a kiddie pool. Like, this ain't even a kiddie pool. This is smaller than that. This is a damn uh it's a bad time. <laughs> you, yeah, exactly. So the, the reality <laughs> just is I'm not gonna find one here. And so if I want to build a life here, I have to adjust my expectations. And then people will come in and say, Oh, well, then you just settling. No, I'm adjusting my expectations so that I can have a wonderful life. Like how you frame it makes a difference. If I'm hell bent on marrying a millionaire, then I need to go where millionaires are. They're not here. If I choose to stay here, then I have to adjust my expectations. Like, but that concept is so difficult for so many women, men too, because they be thinking they deserve something that clearly they, they know, sir, you don't you really don't. But it's a hard concept for so many people to be reflective and say, where's my lane? Where do I fit? And are my expectations reasonable? For my face card, my weight card, my social economic card, my location card. You know what I'm saying? If any of those fail, you know what I'm saying? People will, they, but they act like everything, and I'm passing everything. But sir, you're about to fall the fifth grade. you about right. to fall here. And they yeah, look, they're not in reality because I remember there was a group of women and they were all over the internet talking about how Rihanna settled with ASAP Rocky. And I'm like, y'all, Rihanna is a billionaire. So we break down the amount of men on the planet Earth that are billionaires. Her pool is teeny, 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 tiny. She ain't even in a bathtub. She in a shower with this person at this point. But you know what I'm saying? Then you got to find the amount of billionaires that are single because over 85% of billionaires billionaires are already married then she got to find a billionaire the single that she attracted to and he got to be attracted to her and she's her her child's father her and asap rocky he seems to love her seems to adore her y'all act like this man is out here pu pushing a broom 
this man is a multi-millionaire okay, like himself. <laughs> right. They, 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 this man is like a multi-millionaire, but they're like, oh, she's settling. Settling for what? According to whose standards? So realistically, when you talk about how like you got to be real with your face card, weight card, location card, body card, all of that type of stuff, they are not in reality. That's the, that's the issue. People don't want to tell themselves the truth. And for some reason, they think that being honest with themselves means that they have low self-worth or low self No, you can have good self-worth and good self-esteem and still be honest with yourself and say, this is where I am and it's okay. And then like you said, your pool, because you're in a very small town, realistically, if you want to find a man that's in that area, that's a millionaire, it's going to be very slim. It could happen. Right. He, he could be some millionaire, multimillionaire man that moves to town and be like, hey, I'm I'm here. Right. Or you, you may want to ask and he said, OK, baby, I love you and I'm ready to retire. Yeah, I like the country living. But there's not a huge selection of those men in the income bracket where you are. And so it's OK to say I can find a good man. He may not out earn me, but this is you know what I'm saying? But this is a great guy. He earns well. He does well. He's here geographically where I want to be. And we can make something shake. And it's so wild to me. Like y'all be out here passing up on super good men Those because men you will women. not be honest with yourself. Yeah, Teresa said, I I ain't nothing, and I will remain single. That's an option also. And then somebody else said, I like how you deny people's experiences. You're really genuine. I don't know what that means because I ain't a de I ain't denying anybody anything. Um, life will deny you everything. I don't have to do it. <laughs> Just walk out there and be fat and think that you're gonna find some uh billionaire and see what happens. I ain't never seen a billionaire with a fat woman. That and that's just the truth. So life will deny you everything that I'm I'm yeah, trying to do about I haven't, it, so. I haven't either. And they, they can be mad at you if they say that. Y'all and I'm a big baddie and I tell I ain't seen no billionaires with no with a with a thickums. I ain't seen them with a fat one. I sure ain't seen them with an obese woman. It just is what it is what it is. Yeah, sometimes it's not, it doesn't become real until it actually becomes real. When you're, when you find yourself in life in a desert, metaphorically, but this is how real sometimes it has to happen. Life has to happen to us in order for us to realize. When you find yourself in life desert, struggling, thirsty for love, thirsty for attention, thirsty for affection, thirsty for just family, for someone to be around you. And someone comes along finally and, and offers you a glass of water. But because you don't like the glass that it's in, you you turn it away. The very thing that's going to rejuvenate you and give you life, but because you don't like the vessel per se that it came in, you deny the very life source you need to keep going. So sometimes mm -hmm. it's not real. It don't become real to us to actually in it. And that's, that's sad. That's sad. However, to each is her own. Venus, but the thing is, we are literally telling them over and over and they will die and get to the pearly gates and be like, but yeah. nobody told me. Ma'am, everybody yeah. told you, yeah, that's drink the saying. water, take the yeah. water, lower the, make, have realistic expectations. And they will swear up and down, well, I don't want to settle. Okay, well then you didn't want to settle. This is what you got for not settling. And settling is really in air quotes because I don't think it's settling when the best option for you becomes available. It's not settling. It's just what it is. You either accept it or you reject it. But it's not settling. And that's just what I was about to say, Deshaun. Yeah. Like, I feel like we need to talk about what is exactly settling because I don't think that a lot of women realistically know what settling is. They'll say everything. I'm not going to settle. I'm not going to settle. I'm not going to settle. You're not going to settle for what? Like, what exactly? Like, okay, do y'all remember... Um, but this was like a while ago. It could even have been last year. Do y'all remember? It was a video going viral. It was a guy, a, a guy that had took the girl back to the airport because basically he flew her out and she didn't want to give up no meow meow. Do y'all remember that? And then this video <laughs> went viral all over the place. I remember women getting on here okay getting on beyonce's internet and talking about what 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 what's what's a what's a few thousand dollars what's five thousand dollars blah 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 y'all sound stupid let me tell y'all this okay i'm all the way married if if corey 
Okay, if I get flued out, baby, and I mean, I already know what it is. Okay, what 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 you want me to do, baby? I'm already, baby, my lingerie and my baby oil is already in the bag. I already know what's going down. Okay, and I'm not gonna sit here and disregard all of the work, all of the labor, all of the energy he had to put into the money to get me there to do that. Do y'all realize that the average man in the United States right now makes in between forty-two and forty-four thousand dollars a year? So if this man spend $3,000 or $5,000. He has spent over 10% of his income to flu you out, to house you, put you on a trip, feed you, put you on a vacation and, and, right, and give you an amazing time. Let's say you mess with a man that's $100,000 or $200,000 there. Okay? Five stacks is still a lot of money. Half of y'all out here talking about what's that? Don't even have the money to pay your phone bill on a regular basis. You out here calling to get extensions and you got bad credit, right? And you, can't, and you barely can afford your regular day-to-day lifestyle. How dare you disrespect what someone is giving to you because you over here caught up with the internet. I'm going to tell y'all this right now. You're not going to sit here and tell me that they didn't have no conversations on the telephone or through text messages about what was going down and what the expectations were on that trip. Number two, as a woman, you don't never go nowhere that you can't get back on your own, okay? What it was that she thought she was going to get out there and finesse and old boy was going to be playing games with her, but he said, nah, baby, and we don't do that around here. You can go right on back to where you came from because I'm going to tell you this, okay? Let me get flued out. I already know what time it is. It was this guy that I dated, and he was crazy about me. We're just going to call him E for short, okay? E was crazy about me. I remember he was like, oh, I want to take you to Paris. I want you to come with me to Paris for Valentine's Day. I knew I wasn't feeling E like that. You know what I did, y'all? I turned down the trip. I said, thank you, but no thank you. You know what I mean? I know what I know what it is that you want from me. Well, I can get you a separate room and this and this and that and blah, 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 blah. At the end of the day, y'all, this man is not going to fly me out first class to Paris, okay? And he was heterosexual, very heterosexual. He had made it very clear he was attracted to me. He not going to take me on some all-expense-paid trip, let me go to Chanel, run up a bag and carry on and not be expecting something eventually. I already knew it wasn't going there with him so i politely declined the trip now Ashley, you know what else is important to love um not, what, um, pardon me for cutting you off i was gonna say that no, uh, say this the same thing as far as some type of dialogue had to be exchanged i remember that uh viral video also let's not forget that there are women turning up unalive playing yes. these games, playing these reindeer games with men or even women trying to finesse them, not understanding that you don't even understand a person's psychology and you going to find yourself accepting just because he flew me out somewhere, just going to forget about your life. There are women living in the I'm going to tell you this. Like you, getting, you getting flued out, you better be prepared to suck that D. I said what I said. You bet you better you better you better be pre- you better be prepared to do something freaky. You better be prepared yeah. to do something freaky. If he is flying you out, he is feeding you, he whining you, he dining you, he putting you on. I don't care what these people on the internet say. They are out here lying. It is big cap. People just out here saying what they, you better be prepared to do something freaky, okay? If that man is flying you out and y'all are not related to one another, you better understand what it is. Stop playing games in these streets because you're going to F around and get hurt. Two things I want to say. Number one, the big problem is they can't afford to do it for themselves. So they're trying to finesse. So they're going to do it so that they can say that it happened because they cannot do it on their own. There has never been anything offered to me that I took without that I could not like do it on my own. If I got flewed out, I can flew home. You know, I don't care if I had to get on the Greyhound bus to get back. I had enough money to get back to where I came from. That's number one. And number two, y'all have been looking at this stuff. I swear to God, I didn't know people were going to Dubai. I'm looking at them like, how they getting over there? They, they getting dookied on them. That's how they okay. getting over there. They getting porta potty girls. They getting porta potty. 
Y'all, Listen, Carisha, the got, on, Carisha on. got on the whole internet and on her podcast and said that she liked Golden Shower. She liked whenever somebody, you know, puts their puts their bodily fluids on her. I said, girl, you should have kept that to yourself, okay? And y'all wild if y'all don't think she put that out there because she wasn't advertising, okay? That's why she rolling around in that Maybach right now. <laughs> okay, exactly. But then I look at the Maybach. And be like, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna, honey. It, it ain't enough money in the world for me to lay down. It ain't enough money for you to flush. Okay, there is not, not enough. enough money. I don't even it like ain't. a dude to sweat on me when we do it. Hard. And I love him. I don't like his sweat. You think something? Go Come out of one of them other holes, baby. Yeah, listen. So you just gotta be real it. with yourself. Know, know yourself. Know what you like. Know what you dislike. And and stop stop pretending to be someone else, please. Because it's really killing a lot of y'all. Mentally, it's really destroying a lot of us. I and I really believe it's the internet. I I, I really believe, and I, and I say this too. People that are living regular lives are not on here talking about it. We, you know what I'm saying? We see mm -hmm. the soft life people and all of this. And the people that are living just regular lives with regular kids, regular problems, they're not on here talking about it like this, you know? So everybody thinks that, you know, they, they're going to go out and get a man and be in a Maybach, but nobody expects, you know, golden showers because they don't talk about that part. So I, I don't know. I, I just think that somebody said earlier, um, what if he's not attractive? This goes back to y'all don't know what y'all want. Is your Are you entering into a relationship that is transactional or are you entering into a relationship for love? Y'all don't know the difference between the two and you keep conflating them. So if you're saying, what if he's unattractive then that means that you're looking for a relationship based off of love that means you might have to soften the financial part of it if you're looking for finances then you're going to have to soften the looks part of it the unrealistic people and the unrealistic women think that they're going to get top tier fine men and top tier looks top tier uh you know mm -hmm. They thinking they're going to get top tier everything and it don't work like that. You got to figure out what is your lane, what is important to you. Is it looks and love or is it money and security? Please stop it's, saying beauty is in the eye of the beholder. That is a damn lie. We all know when somebody <laughs> ugly. Like, let's just stop playing. We know when somebody ugly. We know when somebody fine. I mean, that's just what it is. We look at dudes all the time and be like, oh my God, he fine. Or we look at him and be like, oh my God, uh, you troll, just get the hell on. Stop playing with me. Stop playing with me. The only people that say that are you know, And you know, whenever you he's not attractive because you got to give people a disclaimer before y'all meet, you know. Oh, well, he really well or he's super smart or he owns a tech company girl the fact you got to put out a disclaimer you already know that that man is hard on the eyes y'all out here playing games like i said true enough somebody is attractive to everybody but there are some people on the planet earth they're attracted to they're attractive to way more people than not those are people that are conventionally attractive and you just got to keep it a buck and, and some people in here they don't care about looks they really date off of personality they date off of intellect right they date off of how that person treats them and that's fine but there are also some people here y'all gotta tell the truth y'all shallow hell and that's okay too if, you, if you're gonna be a shallow hell or a shallow hillary and you want to lead by the looks but you got to understand it's gonna be some other things that's gonna be lacking you gotta put you gotta pick a side that Listen, comes with it. They want know, looks until their man is spends more time in the mirror than they do. Listen, and I get on here all the time talking about redwoods and sequoias. So y'all already know what's important to me. I, you, you can be hard on the face as long as you hard somewhere else. I done made it perfectly clear at 52 what I'm looking for. So y'all, <laughs> that's why I say y'all don't know what you want. Y'all don't know what you want. I had to come up with a whole nother terminology to stop getting 
suspend it because I would just say it. You know what I'm saying? So we got the weeping willows, we got the community oaks, and we got the redwoods and the sequoias. And they can you can have a I will a redwood ain't gotta have a job. He ain't gotta have uh, money. He ain't got to have no personality. He ain't got to talk. See, y'all don't know what you want though. You see what I'm saying? So we talking, girl. We talking trees every night. We talking. You talking to me? I'm at my and I think that changed too based on where you are in life, right? Because for me, like, I'm not going to sit here and lie, y'all. I don't have children and I would like to have children and I don't want my kids to be ugly because I know life is harder when you're ugly. So, yes, I look for a man that was attractive and I also want him to be able to make money. But because I make enough money to take care of myself, money was not my top one priority right like at the end of the day i wasn't gonna turn down a man if he because he doesn't make 20 million dollars a year i wasn't gonna say oh well i'm not gonna date him because he doesn't make this much no i'm looking are you gonna be faithful to me are we gonna be able to build something together am i attractive to you if i have children with you are my children gonna look like will the beast especially like this is the thing if you're a man and you hard on the eyes a man can make up with his personality dressing nice and being successful if you a woman and you facially challenged we're not going to sit in here in front your life is going to be a lot more challenging than a woman who's naturally beautiful it just is what it is and you can put on makeup and you can put on wigs and you put on prosthetics and stuff but eventually you're going to take it off and even if you're going to get plastic surgery well guess what one day you're going to have children and the children going to tell on you because the children going to look the way that you look before you went and had the surgery so for me realistically I, and i know some people probably think this is horrible what i'm saying but i'm just telling the truth i wanted to, i wanted to make sure that my children are going to be moderately attractive to beautiful so for me looks was important i looked at that man's face and was like if our faces if it was a combination and they got mixed up would i have ch a children especially if she's a girl it because y'all we not finna sit here and act like pretty privilege doesn't exist i know that it does i've experienced it i'm not gonna sit here and lie and try and say that i don't get things or i don't get extras or i don't get invited or people aren't friendlier to me or people don't let me get away with something things because of my aesthetics they do they absolutely positively do can i interject something in here my sister new chicken mama said ask my sister about them hazel eyes her whole criteria for her baby daddies was that he had to be fine because she wanted some pretty babies and all of her baby daddies are fine and all of her children are beautiful now i'm gonna put a i'm gonna put a period on there because them baby daddies were crazy and my niece and nephew lord have mercy now but but they beautiful they are beautiful and i'll be <laughs> honest when i met my ex-husband i was like he fine and he gonna give me some smart he was fine and smart i said oh i'm gonna have a beautiful baby a beautiful smart baby and i got a beautiful smart baby and i swear to god some days i wish he was a little dumber because he is super smart and you can't just say anything to him so you got to be careful what you ask for because my niece and nephew beautiful 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 my son's super smart, but Lord have mercy. Don't think that it don't come with some challenges. Right. I want, I, want some, I want beautiful and smart. You want somebody that can get out here and make it in life. And some of y'all probably in the comments, y'all over here clutching your pearls, baby. It is what it is. And there's some women in here. They know what we are saying is absolutely true. There are some women that get treated totally different if they got on their makeup compared to if they go out with a bare face. Keep it a, keep it a buck. Okay? So keep, keep it a buck. It is what it is. Yeah. And so you gotta, I feel like when you you're trying to when you start saying I want to reproduce, you want your children to have the best competitive advantage they can have. And so, for, you have so to therefore, be transparently honest with yourself, you really do. Being transparently honest with yourself, so because what you're saying is so true, and even though a lot of us actually think like that, because we know what it is, we just crucify ourselves and each other because we. When, especially when we hear someone else say it out loud. But we know it to be true. But if that's your get up, that's your get up. Just acknowledge it and accept it and own it. Just live in your authentic truth. 
Uh, Oprah's a billionaire. I, I don't think I think billionaires live by a different set of rules, just in general. I mean, I'm just saying. No, but no, no billionaires are attractive. <laughs> exactly. She got a tall. She got six feet, six fingers, six pack. Because she was a billionaire. I mean, you know, so I think they they just have the, their rules are different. Um, either either one of the people I just added, y'all go ahead. I have I have a comment. And when I had I got two kids, grown kids. My daughter. Um, hold on, hold on, hold on, one minute. I'm trying to I'm trying to move my TV. Hold up. My daughter is 26 years old, and when I met her, her, her father, he, you know, he—I could say he wasn't the best, but he—he—he he, he wasn't the best, like fine, like whatever. But he—he he took care of me and, and my daughter, and my daughter turned out to be really pretty. And I just wanted to say, with me, like uh, the lay on top was saying. To me, I have to disagree. It's not, I mean, some, I can't, well, how can I say this? I disagree, I kind of disagree, and then I don't disagree. That makes sense. I think a lot of times when we're looking for relationships, yeah, you want that person to be, um, have, uh, have, uh, you know, looks and personality and, um, be, you know, be understanding. And you don't want to, you don't want to have a kid just by anybody and, and the child turn out any type of way. But when it comes to when it comes to what it, when it comes down to what God who God sends you, does it really matter if he has a six figure income? What he's making, what what you on the on an even uh, even uh, situation? Does it really matter who makes more? Is it or is it about the fact that y'all love each other and you're trying to build something? So, okay, again, this is the whole thing. <laughs> We got two different conversations going. You're talking about love. When you're talking about love and spirituality and God sending you somebody, that's over here, okay? That's great for this group of people. This group of people say, yeah, I'm going to need to see the bank account. There's not one that's righter or wronger, okay? Right. And this is the and this is the thing. So I'm not in my twenties. So in my twenties, I may have been, you know, said, Oh, I'm gonna get with this man and we're gonna build together and whoop de whoop whoop and all of that. I'm real grown, okay? Like had already making my money out here in these streets, already had my home, all of that good stuff, money in the bank, investments, all of that. So for me, no, I, a man absolutely there's a certain there's a certain standard and then also i'm around men that are very high six figure seven figure eight figure earners um on a regular basis some of them even into a couple into the nine figures so for me i'm not even around the type of men that economically aren't going to be stable number two when i prayed and i asked god God know what I want, and he gave me the designs of my heart. So God did send me a man that's fine. He sent me a man that was financially stable, that fit into the category, right? He sent me a man that's good to me. When I was in the hospital, he would show up every single night, spend the night with me, you know what I mean? Make sure I was okay after. Somebody that was going to be with me no matter what I went through. But I do believe, you know, that you can pray and you say, okay, God, this is what I would like. But at the same time, I worked on myself. And I also know what Lorraine I'm in. Like earlier when we were talking, I said if I wanted to bag a white, rich billionaire, I'm going to have a hard time. I would have to drop like 100, 120 pounds because they like their women real petite. And whenever normally they with black women, they like black women that are cocoa to chocolate. They like black women that look like supermodels with very distinct facial features, women that are very, very exotic, right? So realistically, is it a possibility that I could get me one? It, it's slim. It's slim. My competition is going to be hard for me to get in that category. You got to know your lane, but that's not what I was after. But I absolutely positively like, yeah, you God know we live on a planet of commerce and transactions. So I may not say, oh, you don't make 10 or $20 million a year. I'm not going to disqualify a man because of that. But at the same time, there's I'm not I'm not gonna sit here and lie to y'all. I'm not gonna sit here and date a man that comes to me and he like here I am with my thirty six thousand dollars a year, but I love you. What well, the love you got for me better motivate you to go and earn more than that. 
because at the end of the day, I need a man that can at least maintain the standard of living that I have already. And I want my children to be able to go to good schools. I want my children to be able to have opportunities on my children if they want to be in dance or football or baseball. I don't want to be sitting here telling my children, you can't participate in an extracurricular activity. I can't afford to get you a tutor. I can't afford to pay someone to come in here and teach you a second language. I don't want to be out here telling my kids, well, we can't, we got to eat all processed food. We can't go buy the fruits and the vegetables or we can't have really good health insurance because your daddy can't afford it. I ain't really looking for that. But like I said, I make my own money. So money wasn't necessary. It's not the top priority to me, but I'm also looking for a man that's out here hustling and working and wants to provide for myself and for my future children. I just got a question. Somebody said, why are we obsessed with struggle love? Um, what is struggle love? Because I promise you, I just make about this. all of y'all are idolizing Queen Charlotte saying you want that type of love. And I swear to God, I ain't seen not one, not one snippet that wasn't struggle and love. But y'all saying that you want that kind of idol, idolization from your man. You want that kind of connection. And she was literally ripped from her home, forced to marry a man that she really didn't want to be with. She tried to leave, ended up staying, and the motherfucker was crazy. And she had the way of the kingdom on the on her back. So mm -hmm. help me understand what is struggle love. Dating a broke man is struggle love. Most of y'all broke. Most of y'all broke and y'all don't seem to really understand that y'all, y'all the brokies too. Y'all call, call it men, dusties and broke. Y'all broke too. You see what I'm saying? And just because a man doesn't make six figures, that does not make the love struggle. It's struggling in your head because your priorities are different. So if you want right. a man that makes a whole bunch of money, go after those men. But if that is not a priority for me because I'm choosing a man that doesn't make the same amount that I do, that does not mean we have struggle love. That means we have a different set of priorities. Everybody need to figure out what they want, though. Everybody right. need to figure out what they want. Well, that's just like different me. I'm just working for different parents. folks. I, I was a single parent. My daughter's 26 and my son is 29. And I think I did pretty dang good, pretty dang by myself to raising my kids. My daughter's in North Carolina, you know, and my son is here. And I understand what y'all saying as far as wanting somebody to what has money. But I guess the part I'm trying to grasp is how do I say this? I know that's important because you want somebody to be to be on the same level as you are. I get that. But I can well, say not necessarily the same level because Deshaun just said when it comes to finances, she's not looking for a man that's on the same level. The finances is not my top tier priority. I've been out earning most of most black men since I've been about 26 years old. So I was 20, I was like 27 when I made my first million dollars. So realistically, unless I dated men that were athletes or when I dated men that were a little older than me, most of the time, most of the men in my age bracket never made more than me, right? However, there's still though a certain level of ambition that I'm looking for, a certain level of respect responsibility I'm looking for, a certain level of desire in that man to constantly be improving in his life. And so for me, that's why I said money is not my top priority, but well, he got to be bringing something in. I want to say, say, say that money is the top you priority. Sweet with it. You being sweet with it. The bottom line is you're not broke. You're not ugly. You're in a certain so, so, social circle and most of the women are not there. That's the reality. So when they show up talking about struggle, love and dating broke men, they're not too much further. If you're looking at the income brackets, they're in the same damn bracket. So I'm, that's why I'm trying to figure out what, where is the struggle in that love? I mean, you you don't want to struggle, then you need to make your own fucking money. That's what you did. You know what I'm saying? So I'm, that's why I'm trying. That's why I always push back on when they start talking about a struggle love, because you got these men out here and black men deal with a very specific, excuse me, a very specific kind of persecution. And I don't care what nobody say. They they can be the smartest person in the room. If Corey was white, he'd probably have three, four times, you know, the wealth that he has now. There are certain okay. people that are just going to reject him strictly because of who he is, because he is a black male. So black men have certain challenges. You know what I'm saying? So when black women just show up and be like, oh, 
you know, I'm not going to do this. And this is struggle, love, here, truck, all of this. I'm like, uh, uh, what, what are we really saying here? You know what I'm saying? You know they have very specific qualities. They show up. They're a good husband. They're going to take care of the kids. They're going to love you. They're going to be faithful to you. They're going to treat you well. But because he makes $80,000 and not $110,000, all of a sudden he's not a good partner? Like that, that logic makes crazy. crazy to me. I'm, I'm sorry. That's my word. I just want to interject as a person that is what most would consider like a middle income person and that has a traded skill. I kind of get what she's saying with the struggle of sometimes, especially if you are a black woman that wants to only date black men, you'll find yourself dating men that is of a lower tax bracket. And I'm, this is not to kind of shame on them or anything. That's of a lower, a different kind of mindset. So, so I got a question though. Why do you think that there's only deal. black? Why do, but why do you think that there's only black men? The average income for a man in the United States, whether he is black, white, Indian, Filipino, indigenous, whatever, the average income for a man in the United States, not the, not just black men, a man in the United States is in between forty two and forty four thousand dollars a year, and that's yes. according to the two thousand twenty two labor statistics. So I be trying to figure out why do y'all feel like this is only a black man thing this is that's the average man in the united states no matter his race i think we can only speak from experience being a black person and and i can only speak from being in america it's just hard in general so when you have two people in a relationship and they're struggling and if you have to carry a person especially as a female what does struggle mean but how are they telling me that what do you mean by struggling example of me and my ex which i have a child by but um so i was probably making maybe 80 90 a year he was probably making 20 30. but i was like okay, okay. you know how this goes. that's a hundred thousand dollars what were y'all struggling to do not pay the bills what? because if y'all were struggling to pay the bills you see what i'm saying i'm trying to figure out what is the struggle there though pay the bills but i think too that i've come accustomed to a certain lifestyle and sometimes people have to take that into account if that what is the struggle though you see y'all can't tell us what the struggle is what was it's, the struggle i was like okay let's fix up the house let's get some financial wealth together and he just wanted to penny pinch i'm like we got a kid together we need to get some land together we need to do some investments and it was always excuses after excuses after excuses okay, hold so I'm, I'm trying to figure out, you still have not clearly articulated the struggle. Was the struggle that y'all had different financial aspirations? Yes, ma'am. They, they had didn't different financial married. aspirations and they had different mindsets. Married. But y'all right. didn't need to be married. That was a conversation that should have occurred before you got married. If you have a different mindset, that's, that has really nothing to do with the money. You wanted him to go out and make more money. He said he didn't want to do it. That's a conversation that should have occurred before you got married. That's not struggle love. You chose that struggle when you chose him and didn't have the appropriate conversations before y'all got married. If she wanted a partner, she should have chose a partner. She should have exactly. had a conversation with him prior to getting married. She should have known that he wasn't going to be the partner that she needed and didn't marry him. It is unrealistic to not have conversations, get married, and then be like, I want you to change. That is unfair to both parties. If Aren't you didn't want to carry the you shouldn't have started off carrying the load. That That is true. I can own up to that. But I think sometimes, a lot of times, women get in these situations, and for whatever reason, we always think it's going to be okay. And then we, we always think it's going to be no, great. It's because, no, we got we to gotta tell, gotta tell the truth. It's not that you think it's going to be okay. You think that you're going to be able to change that man. And this is why mindset, character matters, right? So whenever somebody says something to me about me, you know, if I only want to date a man that's ambitious or I'm watching him be 
consistent and progressing in his plan, that's why that's a standard for me because I know realistically I'm the type of person I always want to improve and I will be turned off by a man that says I'm happy with where I am and I don't want to improve in my life in any other way, whether that's financially, spiritually, mentally, physically, whatever it is. So black women have to be honest and say, I chose somebody and I thought I was going to be able to influence him. I thought I was going to be able to change him. I did not pay attention to his actions and his behaviors. And now I regret it. And that's okay to get in there and say, I messed up. I shouldn't have chose that type of man. But then you can't go out here and label all of these brothers and say that, oh, it's in a struggle because there are plenty of black men that get up every day that go to work. They have side hustles. They learn how to invest. They want to be faithful. They want to have families with us. They still choose us. When you, If you line up 100 black men, over 80% of them will still say, I'm after a black woman. And a lot of black women, we ignore these men. Have y'all looked at the statistics when it comes to the, yeah. the amount of women in the dating pool that are going after the available black men? A lot of black women look over those types of men. It, but see, but this that goes back to when, and I'm not trying to pick on you, but I'm just saying when I said what is the struggle, there, there really was no struggle that she did not create herself. She didn't struggle. You see what I'm saying? Rather than accepting the man how he is, she created the struggle, and we do this so often with men. We want them to be more than what they are, even though they're coming exactly how they are. So then it goes back to, am I going to settle? Well, are you going to settle or are you going to have realistic expectations for your mates? You know what I'm saying? If you have to carry the brunt of the household, she did not create the struggle. She created the struggle. She did, she did him. because she because she chose him and she chose to have a child with him. And the reality of the situation is she wanted to be with a man that was going to provide the lifestyle for her that she was accustomed to already providing for herself. So if you get with a man and he does not financially have the ability to do that, and you say, Okay, I'm still gonna be with you anyway. Well, no, you did create it because now you're turning around and you're resenting this man for not being able to provide for you financially. And at the end of the day, as women, we all have the choice. And that's what that's what y'all seem to be forgetting. We get to choose who we want to be with. And that may be, that may mean that you may be single a little longer than what you anticipated if you know that your your choice is a top five percent of men or a top three percent or one percent or fifteen percent or whatever it is. That means that it's gonna take you longer to find him. It's just like if you go outside right now and you look on the road, you're gonna see a ton of hundreds, you're gonna see a ton of Toyotas, you're going to see a ton of Dodgers, right? Then you move up into the Mercedes Lexus category. It's not going to be as many of them. Then you start getting into a supercar. No, we ain't going to, then we're going to say we're going to get into the Jag and into the Range Rover category, right? It's going to be even fewer of them. Well, then let's say we start getting into McLaren, Ferrari, Rolls Royce, Bentley. It's way less of them on the road because they're, because one, you have to have higher qualifications to to those particular types of vehicles. So you can't be out here saying, I have expectations for a man to give me a Rolls Royce lifestyle, but I went ahead and partnered and had a baby with a man that can only afford a Honda lifestyle. It doesn't okay, make can sense. I, can I say something? Let me ask a question. And, and, I, and this is, um, and if that's King asking, I just all due respect, I've been following you since Periscope. So believe Thank me, you so I'm much. with you. Absolutely. Um, and to the host, this is my first time here. But but I just want to just share something. And it was something that was mentioned. And the thing that I think that I'm discomfortable and I'm not really comfortable about hearing is that she chose a man like that. Okay, first of all, when you're dating someone, your intent is to grow together. That's the intent. How do you know that? Oh, now when you're dating, dating. Hold on, wait, 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 However, I'm listening to these other stories that I can identify with, so I'm sharing my experience and my thoughts behind it. Is that okay? 
Yeah, but speak from your okay, perspective. I'm, say I'm, I, only speaking, you I'm only speaking okay. from mine based on what I've been okay. hearing. And what, and because everybody's based on their experience, your, your opinions are based on your experience, right? And so are mine. So what I'm saying is that when I hear people say she chose to be with that type of man, most times that's not exactly what it is. You're, when you're dating someone, your whole goal is for you all to grow together. And if it's not, it should be. Most times black women outgrow the man that they're with because a lot of times black men, a lot of times black men do not grow with the woman they're with and we have given a whole lot to a lot of black men to help them grow we have been the breadwinners in the home to kind of sort of help and and say to them you know hey why don't we do this why don't we do that and he did not want to do it who knew that in the relationship that you chose to be in that that man did not choose to be with you to as you grew that's not you knew it when you chose him I don't That's care what y'all say. I do not care. Okay. You don't know how these still, men are. And then y'all want still, them to be something that still, they're not. And when they are not, still, you denigrate all black men, which is exactly what you're doing. About, and let me tell you no. something. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. How well, you I'm not going to stop and I'm not, and I've been listening to you the whole time and you don't want to hear anybody else's opinion but one person. Well, no, you know what? You know what? How about this? Um, can I go? just not making a lot of money and so just because you choose that's not making the money that you think he should make i'm not going to allow people to denigrate all black men i'm just not going to do it i'm sorry no, i just know me. that we you know hey, our perceptions shape our reality and the misinformation that's just her perspective you understand and we use terms and we have a different perspective too however the yeah, power of what you, know, what you cannot denigrate our entire group of people because of your personal experience no i, I understand that but that's a very nasty divorce you don't hear me on here denigrating all black men because of what happened to me no, I that my point. Go and understand my part in that. I chose him, regardless mm -hmm. of how he turned out. Twenty years later, I I chose not to stay with him. That, I that, that was my that role, was and y'all are trying to just pass everything and put it off on men without accepting your part in the situation. How about you chose him? The man. So but this I'm, is what I want to ask. I, this is just questions and this is this is real talk okay for the women that are saying it's not that you don't choose as women okay do we or do we not choose when a man approaches us and says hey i like to get to know you and take you on a date do we choose to accept the date or not yes we, we do. absolutely do we do, do, do we do we do we choose who we're going to give uh physical intimacy to yeah, we, we do. Choose do we do we choose um even if we're gonna carry life on here onto the planet Earth? Yes, we do. Do we choose, especially now people in other countries may not have this choice, but in the states, as women, we get to choose if we go into school, well, we get Sarah, to choose our hold, career and profession. Hold on, guys. We I want to I wanna say something really quick. That lady in that lady in the comment, I'm about to mute her. She's being so disrespectful to my host and what y'all talk. She's about, she's about, about, I'm about to mute her. I'm about Go to mute her. She's being disrespectful. Y'all know me. I don't care. I'm not even reading the comments to be honest with you. Because this, 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 this is this is this is this this is the thing though. Know. When when it gets down to choosing by the ladies, you have to understand this. You have a lot of power. You choose if you stay in a relationship, you choose if you leave a relationship, you choose the type of man that you want to be with. And realistically, I will say this until I'm blue in the face and I will stand ten toes down on it. When you watch a man, this is why the old women, the, the seasoned saints, the women with life experience, they will tell you, you watch him. You're looking to see if that man is consistent. You're looking to see if he's 
And not just what he's saying, the walk and the talk got a match. So I give y'all an example. If my man had came to me and said, yeah, I'm in real estate, but I never saw him purchase a property. I never seen him flip anything. I never seen him have any tenants. This is a man who's just future effing me. He just out here talking about what he want to do, but he not actually doing it. We like to believe as women like, oh, men can't be committed. I know men that's the had the same barber for 30 years and won't let nobody else cut their hair. I know and men that meet their homeboys every weekend to go to the gym or go play basketball or pick up game or whatever's going on. Like it, it is absolutely positively a lie. And you got to tell yourself the truth as the woman we get to choose and we have to watch. And it's OK, too, to say I got with somebody and I miss some of these things and I want better in the future. That is OK. But you can't sit here and say as a woman that you do not get to choose who right that you don't get to choose who you're dating you don't get to choose who you're having conversation with you don't get to choose who you have a who you if you bring forth a child and who you bring that child for right like we do we get to choose all of that and in the states we get to choose if we go into school we get to choose if we want to work we get to choose if we want to stay at home like we get a lot of choices you get to choose what you put on in the morning you get to choose the music you listen to you get to choose the company you keep and when you are dating you're initially just getting to know someone i don't you know and i disagree with with the last young lady when she was like you date to grow together no i'm dating you to see if i even like you if we decide that we're going to be exclusive and we're going to work towards marriage well now we've made a commitment to one another to grow together and i would hope before you get married y'all would have a discussion and have a plan for how y'all how y'all are choosing to move together as a married couple in the world my my fiance actually bought. Uh, it may not be the best car, but he bought me a to he bought me a Toyota Camry. A Toyota a Camry Solera. Baby, and that's a whole come up. You got a man that bought you a car. Don't you put no disclaimer on there. A bunch of these girls out here, a bunch of men that won't even, give, won't even give them a hug. Okay, you got a man that bought you a whole car, baby. Okay, you better, you better, you better, you better brag. You better brag. Okay, they out here, they out here with somebody won't buy them a pizza stick, much less a car. <laughs> <laughs> hey, feminine, follow me, love. Follow me. You, my girl, man. You are. You speaking the truth. You really are, man. I just. I was so happy. You know what I'm saying? It was it, it, I'm, I'm happy when I was happy when he bought it for me. It ain't the best looking thing, but it's mine. And I, I just want to say, y'all are so right about what y'all are saying. You know. And it's just, it's amazing how that woman she got, she was trying to enter, you know, saying what she said, it wasn't even right. But when we think about, when we think about life and what we want out of life, you know, it took me a long time. I'm 48 years old, it took me a long time before I really actually realized what, when I'm like, I raised both of my kids, they came out good. Uh, it is in my name, Butterfly. It is in my name. And I just, I, you know, I just have to say, you know what, you're right, y'all, we cannot degrade, we cannot put men down because you don't know they could be they could be the best person in the world you know and, and not make and you know like you're saying make what they want to make if, if, they're, if they're allowed to so if a man come along he's making twenty thousand dollars and you can match that that's what that's what the best thing is excuse me <laughs> so you're right about what y'all saying and it, it, it does make a lot of sense you know and Tony, whenever, i'm sorry i was going to tell tony to go ahead when you're done Are you, are you still? Okay. So I was going to say, I think that some messaging needs to change, especially for younger women that are dating out here in the pool. Okay. I've been married for 19 years. We were 24 when we got married. We both were making the same salary. You know, you have these ideas, you have these um, things that you talk about, about how you want to raise your family, so on and so forth. Now, did I exceed him with my income? Yes, we are both educated. We're both college educated, but my income exceeded his. And that had that became a source of resentment. So I had to do a lot of um, working with him as we are a team, you know, but 
you do when you get in these relationships, you do think that you are going to grow together, especially when you start out very young. So can I ask you why? Why do you think that? Why do, why do they think that? Well, I I think that again, I was 24 and we both came out ambitious looking at the world, you know, with these rose colored glasses and you just think that the things that you all are talking about, you think that y'all are on the same why? page. You keep saying the same thing over and over. Why do you think that? You see what I'm saying? Why do you think that? You think it because you didn't have real conversations. And so you fill in the gap with your own ideology. You see what I'm saying? Because most of the time, men will let you know what they really want. We don't have the conversation. And so we fill it in ourselves. And then when they don't live up to our expectations, it becomes a problem. When the reality is they pretty much let us know exactly how they are. That's the first part. The second part is they do grow. They just don't grow in the manner that we want to see them grow in. It's impossible to be alive and not grow. They mature some kind of way, but often it is not in the ways that we want them to mature. And so we're not having genuine and authentic conversations with our partners. And then we just start saying, oh, he didn't do this and he didn't do that and, and, and placing all this blame when the reality is we did not have the appropriate conversations and we had unrealistic expectations for our partners. Well, I do think that for me, especially, I did not know to have certain conversations. I just thought that's you know, my, my parents home and being okay. in a bubble. I did not know to have those conversations. And that's why I was saying as far as the messaging for younger women coming up, I think that that needs to be said. You you need to talk mm -hmm. to them. You need to help women because I came from a bubble. I came from a family, two parent household. You know, I came from a bubble. So I did not know. I just automatically thought, OK, we got similar lifestyles, similar backgrounds and you know, we're doing things this the right way and blah, blah, blah. I did not know to have yeah, but I'm about to cut you off a damn. Did you see what just happened? When I literally said, you have a choice. You didn't make the conversation. You didn't have the conversation except your responsibility. I got cuss slammed out, had to kick off and then she was in the comments talking trash. Well, well this is about maturity. I understand I that, though. I understand. Can I, can I ask Miss Tony something? Because you said something very, and you said something super interesting to me, and I would love it if you could elaborate on it. Um, one, congratulations on 19 years. But you said y'all started off in the same place, right? So y'all are building together, and you out ended up out earning him. And you said, you know, what was the process? If you don't mind, if you don't want to share, you don't have to. But I would love to hear the process of how y'all got through that phase of your relationship where he was resenting you because you were, you know, um, outperforming him financially, right? Because I know, you know, that's a, re that's a real thing that people deal with. Um, and y'all, it's just not black women either. They've been putting out a lot of reports. This is something that's very common um, with millennial relationships. And also they think they said that Generation um, Z is gonna be in the same boat where there are gonna be a lot of relationships where the women are actually out earning the men so i would love to hear you know your insight and what you did you know <laughs> during that part of your relationship to work past that it it was hard because i had to help him understand that we're a team we are raising our family together we are working together but it was just a lot of talking and like really breaking down conversations because it was it was hard it was really hard and i think that it's not just me i have some other friends of mine who've gone through the same thing and i think that being able to talk with them and you know taking some of their insight and in how they handle things kind of helped us but it was a lot of talking and he had to be able to see the big picture because it men have egos and they um identify with their titles and you know all those things but it was just really getting to the same place and talking and helping him understand i'm not 
belittling you. We are a team. I agree. You know, all of that. But I mean, it, it was not easy. And I could understand. That's why when they were having a conversation about Ebony and the bus driver and all of that, listen, you can talk to the bus driver. You can love the bus driver. But if he feels less than or resentful, that's a hard walk, you know, in a relationship. So it was just a lot of talk. And then he, he had to get, we had, we went through some things now. But it was definitely us really understanding what what our purpose is together in raising our family and where we're going, you know, for our future. But it, it took a lot. It took a lot of talking and a lot of just supporting each other. Yes, yes. Speak. Yes. That's mature. I let two people in. Um, who did I let in? Is that she, Sheila? Go ahead. Sheila and Paulette. That's who you let in. Hey, ladies. Hey, okay. Miss D. I'm glad to be on hey. here. Hey, hey, Ashley. I've been at Paulette hey. after school, so I'm gonna give a hug. But she'll get up in here. She gonna scrabble with you, baby. She gonna she's a country. She gonna scrabble with you. But I had to come on here because this is an interesting question. This is just just interesting because it's black women and we getting a feed on each other. But the thing about it is. I have four kids, I have four dudes, and when I was in my 20s, I didn't know no better. But for the lady that came on here talking about that was her choice, it is your choice, but are you going to hold yourself accountable? When you hold yourself accountable, you can't, see, we want to date with our legs open and stay there, our minds open. See, when you date with your mind open and stay to your legs, see, when you open, when you open your legs up, you open your soul up. Now all you can think about, oh, we're gonna live so happy ever after. This dude don't even make what you make. His parents didn't even come from where you mm -hmm. came from. See, my thing is that now, part. I, don't ask, I don't ask a man what he bring it to the table. I'm asking what kind of spirits you bring it to. What was your mama like before your mama was your mama? What was your daddy like before your daddy was your daddy? Because that spirit, I'm gonna have to fight when you get with me. Because see, if you come with me, you don't have to pay. already be about money. Because see, baby, it, you are what you attract. You attract a low vibration because your mental was on low vibration, but your bank account was on high rise, but you still was on a poverty mindset. Catch my book out. It's a, a poverty mindset from a wealthy mindset. You got to change your... See, y'all coming out trying to do what grandma and grandma them did. See, grandma them had to lay up with men that would sleep and have two or three families because they had to be taken care of. You can take care of yourself. You an adult. Don't worry about your mama and what your daddy did because them people were slaves own people. They came from slavery. Their parents were slaves. All they know how to do is slave somebody. Oh, stick with Mr. I be dang. I have four babies, four baby daddies. And when I kept growing, they kept they kept lacking. I leave. I ain't got no time to be sitting around no joke because I got a baby because I was led by sex. That Peter was good to y'all. See, that Peter is good to y'all. So that's why y'all with these dudes. that Y'all know the red flags. Y'all seen the red flags? Y'all know the red flags? Oh, this dude that yell, but I'm going to stick it in. Now, your feelings in too. When you open up your legs, you open up your soul, you get vulnerable. Shut your legs and open up your mind. When you open up your mind, you can see a dude just for who he is. Stop talking. Stop telling him all your business. Let me know where you came from so I can see what I want. But see, you have to grow up into maturity because we don't know that. I came from a two-parent household. My daddy was an alcoholic. But you think I'm going to sit her, sit her and let somebody beat my head in like my daddy used to beat my mama head in? Oh, girl, you so masculine. I have to be because I don't feel safe with nobody. Oh, you ain't married that? No, because I had to learn from each one of these dudes. I never bash my baby daddies because if I did, I'm like them. How can I be like somebody I let inside my body? Jump up inside my body then I'm going to get to talking about him. He what I attracted. He is what I attracted. So how I'm going to talk about this dude? Y'all talking about y'all exes, but y'all let that dude Peter slide, slobbing all on this dude, licking all on him from the head to the toe. Now you got girls still talking about, I'm eating, but eating, but food, that's feces, food. And then you're going to go steal kids on your kids. You nasty helper. You nasty helper. You nasty 
people. Get I don't want to get your mouth shut up. I'm just saying because people need to stop to take accountability, man. Who you who let you go up in your body and then you get mad? Oh, I didn't know. Yeah, you know your money is a hundred thousand dollars and you made thirty. I was with a thug nigga make a hundred thousand dollars and think this dude was gonna settle down with me. I'm thinking a million dollar home. He talked about I'm fine in a two bedroom apartment. Right then, I already knew, but I stayed in it because I was digmatized. I stayed in it because I didn't know no better. I stayed in it because I didn't have no older sisters like y'all to come feed us. Y'all eat this food and go digest it. We eat it and gurgitate it up. And we're telling y'all, and y'all want to get mad. Shut up when you come to people's platforms and they, they can help y'all. Y'all ain't y'all ain't y'all mama, y'all grandma. Look how they got done. They somewhere on social security dropping a check. Cause they had to deal with all of this abuse and sick and all of that. Come on now. We ladies, we got to do better. Want to come on people's platform, argue. Go get your own platform. Go get your own platform, baby. Oh, yeah. I, Miss D, I don't want no disrespect. I ain't trying to get on her and sell myself. But I got 20 plus 200 questions for dating. If y'all want to grab it in my uh, bio, hit the link tree and go ahead and get it. So go ask them to these questions before you open up your legs. It's from a, my name is Mashila Holmes. I'm a minister, author, entrepreneur, and a life and business coach. I have from their life of where they are to where God designed them to be, not where your mama designed you to be, not where your daddy designed you to be, but what God designed you to be. Stop following people and learn your purpose. When you learn your purpose, everything, your purpose may have come. Your purpose money will come. Your purpose has to come. But y'all too busy trying to follow somebody else. Stay in your own lane before you get ran over. <laughs> Thank I'm you. Good, <laughs> <laughs> Ashley. Oh, no. David, look, I can't say I said we need to, I guess we need to be in there for about a fucking baby because I was in here preaching. You know, I ain't going to hold you. I'm not going to hold you. The accountability, honey, and what you talking about that's some real stuff like we can't continue to sit out here and lie to ourselves she ain't say nothing wrong you get to a point you got to tell yourself the truth and say what decisions have i made that have put me in this place in my life and if you're not happy with it like Deshaun was in here earlier talking about the mindset shift you have got to shift your mindset so you can shift your behaviors and actions and put yourself where you want to be but if you ain't here lying to yourself you ain't gonna never get to where you want to be at and i'm gonna say I have, four, I have four i have four kids and if i could tell my younger self this is what i would tell a young girl stop chasing somebody else's money stop chasing everybody else's fame you know what i'm saying god I got something for you to do stop chasing everybody's stuff Y'all chasing these dudes, but I ain't asking them what it, well, your mama wants a hoe, tell me her holism, because you got that holism in you. Damn, ask these people where they come from before you decide, who I want to, I want to be with him. No, this spirit, it might be, see, y'all ain't with these people because some of those spirits that came with those men, you didn't even know how to fight because you ain't spiritual. You carnal. I'm going to say this. She said, she said a whole lot that I agree with. Number one, about your responsibility a lot of us just don't we just don't want to and that's just what it is and anytime you just try to say what was your part in this why did you think that like they just push back you 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 see it you see it a little bit here tonight the other thing is i get on here and i tell the story about what happened with me and my ex y'all never hear me say anything bad about my ex-husband because at the end of the day i chose him i chose him you see what I'm saying? And so I tell what happened so that other people will know that they're not the only ones dealing with, you know, infidelity or marriage breaking up or going through trying times. But the only thing I've ever said about him is that he's a good guy. And every time I say it, people be like, how can you say he's a good guy? Because he is a good guy. He's a good guy that made a bad decision and I chose to leave. That's what happened. Now, if I would have chosen to stay, that would have been fine, too. We would have tried to have to work on our marriage. That's just what it is. People make that decision, too. I just need to check that the divorce lawyer said you're going to get this amount. And I said, shit, the hell with it. I'll start all over with a new motherfucker and feel some more shit with a new one. I said, I'm out. But my point is, I made the decisions. I accept my responsibility in all of it. 
I never denigrate him because I chose him. And I think that that's the part that we miss. You know what I'm saying? We are quick to blame him. It's not a matter of choosing better. It's a matter of, damn it. Let me see, let me see, Miss Dion got it. Miss Dion got it. Miss Dion got it. Cause they rise in your head. Baby, it's not about we choosing. Because we can choose a good proud shoes in the mall. We can choose a good proud shoes with them jokers on and they hurt our feet. It's not about choosing. You got to get to know somebody. You got to get to know your skilo. You got to get Because all the people we date, they good men. They just not good for us and where we trying to go and what we trying to do at any time. Because the mindset I, I have now at 44, I didn't have that at 20. If I had that at 20, I'd be man. Man. This is my point. This is my point. First off, we're not going to tone police because I get sick of that because people come on here and be like, why you cussing? Why this? Why that? If you don't want to leave, we don't we don't need to know that you don't want to he hear her screaming. Mute her, leave the chat, whatever you want to do. But we're not going to tone police. That's number one. No, your mom should have screamed at you so you can hear I don't even know what number two was. I just, oh, this is my point. Whenever y'all come in here and y'all be like, choose better, choose better. Like that's automatically put in a negative connotation on the men. You see what I'm saying? And I I'm really tired of that dialogue that we're having as women when y'all come in and be like, something is wrong with the men. So you're trying to like choose from the trash. You don't have to make a choice at all. You see what I'm saying? So you don't have to make that comment at all. You can choose to not have a choice. But when you're saying choose better, it's, it's the implication is that somehow or another men are inherently flawed. And, and I'm tired of that dialogue. Like, I'm seriously tired of it. There's nothing wrong with them. All of us come with our challenges. All of us come with our deficiencies. You see what I'm saying? And so just saying choose better, hell, they saying that about y'all. And quite frankly, in my comment section on any given day, I have to agree with the motherfuckers. I'm like, damn, they talking about we need to choose better. They need, we need to be better choices for some men. But y'all don't want to talk about that because you're too quick to blame somebody else for the choices that you have made. If you're saying I have to choose better, no, you don't. Don't choose any of them. If you have to deal with how they are, how they show up and ex accept them for exactly how they are, don't make a choice at all. They're, they're not all men. There are men that that are not good character. I don't know them motherfuckers because I don't talk to them. I don't choose from them and be like, damn, I should have chose better. Nope, don't, no choice at all. If I go to buy me a new car, I don't like it in the cars on the lot. I don't pick one and then take it home and be like, this motherfucker, is the gas, I'm sick of this. I don't do that. I say, I don't like any of these cars. Therefore, I'm not going to make a choice. That's it. That's what some of y'all need to do. Simple as that. And that's the reality of the situation. And to tell the truth, you got to figure out, like, you got to look introspectively and figure out why are you making some of the decisions that you're making? Why are you drawn to some of the men that you drawn to? Why are you choosing to have children with some of these men and they're not choosing right to commit to you or to commit to a family? Why are you okay being with a man that you have to take care of? If you know that that bothers you, then why are you doing it? Just like Deshaun said, you don't have to make a choice. And y'all, the truth of the matter is when you develop some standards for yourself, you are going to be alone right a little bit longer than some woman that will take anybody i know some women they will date anybody they will sleep with anybody they'll be with anybody they'll drag anybody home to their mama house they'll let anybody you haul and move in with them just every time they meet a man every other week it's a new man and they think he the one and all this other kind of foolishness if you really have some standards and once you really learn yourself and what you desire you're not even gonna waste time with a man that's not a good choice mm -hmm. you, right. i agree I ashley i agree with, with ashley because if you don't know yourself you, 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 you 
because you don't people not working on themselves. They want to just go get something already made and then they give that person already made and they dog them out. Go get to know what you like. What's your routine in the morning? Do you work out? What's your health looking like? What you work on emotion? Is you reading anything? Or what, what's your spirituality look like? And start working on you and whatever you want is going to attract. It's going to come to you, but people not working on themselves. Yeah, Rena, go ahead. Yeah, people aren't working on themselves. And they don't take responsibility for their choices. It's choices that they made. And when you tell, I've had so many conversations with women and they get really upset with you. They get angry with you for telling them. I'm like, you chose him. You can't be upset because you chose him. Just take the responsibility and say, hey, this wasn't a good choice for me. I'm out. And they stay too long. They're trying to fix somebody and trying to make somebody be what they want. And they're giving them all the signs. If somebody keeps cheating on you, he don't want you. What part of that don't you understand? Everything you said is so true. I'm laughing at Ashley talking about, uh, <laughs> hold on, I'm about to block somebody by accident. Hold on, my bad. Lord, let me stop pressing buttons. Yeah, because I just got cussed out for just saying that you, we make a choice. Like, literally. <laughs> literally it's crazy i don't know and it happens every day in my comment section when i tell women that they need to be held accountable for their own behavior and their own choices right now they they arguing in my comment section one lady is trying to tell the girl that's not what sean is saying and she just stuck on just being argumentative and combative i'm about to go block her ass in a minute because i'm like i don't feel like dealing with this and you got to set your standards and requirements and stick with them. Yeah. That's, yeah, but that's that, the part that, right there. I'm the sorry, Rena your standard, speaking you got to have a standard. Oh, he have a job. Oh, never mind. He ain't got a, he don't have to have a job. He look good. Oh, he, he dudes me down in the bedroom. But he don't have Hold on now, wait a minute. What's wrong What's with wrong that standard? With What's wrong with that standard? No. He can have it. But he got to bring something else. Right he ain't got to have a child. He just got to do me in the bedroom. That's my schedule right now. I promise you. <laughs> anybody can come in. I done said this a million times on my live. That is my standard right now. Redwood and take care of me. That's what I want. I want a man that ain't got no high pressure job. That's not going to be talking about, baby, I can't tonight because I got a meeting in the morning or I got to work late. I want that motherfucker to clock out of his job and come home and take care of me. That is what I want. I want him to worship the ground that I walk on. I want him to think that I am amazing. I want him to have a redwood. And that is all I want right now in life. But that's your standard and that's what you yes. want. And, and you know yeah. what? And you're not gonna complain about it because that is nope. what you're choosing. That's and your choice. What I'm not gonna complain about. I'm not what? gonna complain that he ain't got no money because <laughs> when they built like that, they ain't got no money. We don't know this. <laughs> we don't know this. So you will not hear me coming out here talking about. I thought that he was gonna get a good job. No, I didn't. I thought that he had a redwood. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Here we go with the. Janine, I can't say the thing. You know, you know what a real wood is, ma'am. Like figure it out. <laughs> figure it out. He ain't got to have a job. He ain't got to have a place to live. He ain't got to have a reliable car. All he needs is a red wood. What are, what are okay. homosexuals good at? They out here performing okay. for housing now. Put two of them together now. <laughs> Y'all, I got to get off of here. I don't know how long I've been. Way too damn long. Probably about three damn hours talking with Ashley. <laughs> I've got to get off of here and get ready for work in the morning. To all Look, of my family. I got to go, go, go walk my plant baby and go to the grocery store. But Deshaun, you out here saving lives, girl. Like you gotta do. I know, I know, baby. They like to fight out here in the comments. I know the girls like to tussle, but you got. But it's other women in here. They are listening. They are thankful for this advice. A lot of women they don't have big sisters. They don't have older cousins. They ain't got aunties that they can come and talk to. And you gotta have some other perspective to counter the transactional perspective. You know, that's floating around the internet because realistically. If someone wants to be happy and they want to have success in a relationship, 
they cannot, you know, be out here sprinkle sprinkling all over the place and following the advice of these ladies of the night. Because realistically, y'all, a lot of the girls that y'all are following in these podcasts, they are professional 304s. Y'all ain't never wonder why some of them don't have jobs. They never talk <laughs> about work, how they're able to travel all over the place. They all live downtown in these beautiful lofts, you know, with these views. They have very limited furniture. They can jump up and go at any amount of time. And they're sitting here saying, I won't talk to a man unless he does X, Y, Z, elemental P, and he has this. Like, literally, y'all, a lot of them are escorts. They are professionals. So they are literally giving you advice based on how a woman who operates um, with transactions in exchange for her body operates. Listen, y'all, let me just say this. If y'all gonna come in here on my lives, we can't say the words because TikTok don't, TikTok don't like it. A 304 is a in a calculator yeah, got, it came from you put it in yeah, a calculator, in a calculator and turn the calculator down. upside down oh, and it's gonna spell the word that's why we say that okay i don't know i don't know who figured that out back in the day like when we was in junior high so but if you put those numbers in a calculator girl flip it upside down and it's gonna spell it for you andrea let me just say this because listen everybody got their own standard of what they want in life that's the problem cool. is we've been culturally culturally conditioned to believe that women should want a certain thing and when a woman shows up and said nope ain't got to do this share for example um ivana trump um it's a whole bunch of women out there that got their own money and they treat men as playthings. when it happens we have a tendency to want to judge them and denigrate them i'm joking but not really at this stage in my life i have said this and i'm not joking he don't have to, I do not want a man with a high pressure job. I absolutely do not want that. Now, you know, I'm always joking. He got to have a place to stay in a car and all of that. Because if I introduce him to my family, I mean, I don't want them looking at me like I don't lost my mind totally. But at the end of the day, when a, when a woman bucks traditional standards, it's like it causes us to be like, what? So it may not work for you. It is probably not going to work for a lot of women because y'all have been culturally conditioned to say, I want a man that makes more money. And that's really been the thread of this conversation. Most of y'all have just focused on the amount of money that a man brings to the relationship. And that is the only thing that you are focused on, irregardless of the fact that you can make your own money, whatever lifestyle that you want. Every single woman in here is capable of making that money and having that lifestyle on her own. So this conversation we have about men and money is a little bit strange to me because you're capable of getting your own mansion. You don't want to work that hard, which is what it boils down to. You see what I'm saying? And so when somebody like me come in and say, I'll stay in this little four bed room, two bath, whatever. And all he got to do is come in and make me happy. Y'all brains are exploding like, why? what? That's all he got to do? Yes, that's all he got to do. Because I want a man that loves me. I want a man that worships me. I, well, I know, four bed, but you know what I'm saying. To some people it is. It's all relative. You know what I'm saying? It's all relative. I want a man that when I look at him, I know that he has my back, that if it's me and him against the world, this motherfucker is going to burn the whole world to the ground. That is the type of love that I want. A lot of times that love doesn't come with a man in a high pressure job. He has to focus on work. So you have to decide what is it that you want? What is it that you want? And I keep saying what I want and y'all still be like, shh, shh, shh. I don't want a man with a high pressure job. I don't want a man doing a whole bunch of traveling for work. I want a man that's going to clock out, come home, rub my back, tell me I'm beautiful and smart, and then we're going to go to the bedroom and make good love. It's real simple. Like, th that is like the simplest shit. And that's what most of our mamas had. Let's be clear about that, okay? They didn't have some corporate exec flying around in fucking fancy cars. They just didn't. And for the vast majority of y'all, and I'm saying y'all, this is what this is a realistic expectation for you too. 
But the internet got everybody thinking it's all about the money. And y'all are missing out on some good men. Broke men make you sad. Broke is relative. I would rather have a broke man that's going to treat me well. Then, listen, I dated a millionaire narcissist. And I'm not just saying narcissist like he was mean to me. I'm saying narcissist because the damn, the papers said he was a narcissist. So if I got to choose, I need a man that's going to be manly, but that his manhood is not tied to a dollar amount. That's the part. And y'all are tying manhood, masculinity, to dollar amounts and not character. I'm just saying. I'm saying I don't care right. about and I'm, I'm, I'm gonna offer up just another just another area of thought for the ladies in here. At the end of the day, everybody got to pick what's best for them. Okay. Y'all got to understand, though, this idea of hypergamy comes from back in the day when women did not have the ability to earn income the way that we can now. When literally back in the day, you had to have a man to even open up a bank account. OK, um, there's a law that's still on the books here in Arkansas that says it's illegal for women to wear high heels and drive their cars. So. Y'all got to remember some of these concepts started when women did not have the ability financially to take care of themselves. The second thing I want y'all to think about is this. If you decide that you're going to stay single forever and you never want to be in a relationship as an adult, are you or are you not going to have to pay all of your own bills? If, if a man never comes to be with you, it's just you by yourself on the block, okay, trying to make it happen, or maybe you and your child, that means 100% of everything is financially on you. So the fact that as an adult, you're out here paying all these bills, let's say a man comes and let's say he can't, it's not going to be hypergamous, okay? Let's say though he can take or 80% of what you have going on. And this man offers all the other things that Deshaun is talking about. There's a guy that loves you. There's a man that's faithful to you. There's a guy that's honest. Y'all can actually build a life together. Y'all have a great time. He makes you feel good when you're around him. Um, he, If you have a child, he may decide, I'm going to be, I have no problem being a bonus father to your child, or maybe y'all are going to have some children together. Why would, because of, this is the thing, y'all are so pressed about what other women on the internet think, y'all would pass up on this man. And who's to say that that's going to be his financial situation forever? Because remember, if you by yourself, you're taking care of 100% of them bills on your own. So y'all would pass up, some of y'all are passing up on good men because it's not hypergamous, because he's not coming in and he can't take care of everything 100%. Ben, and that's right now, especially a lot of y'all that are younger. Now, when you get older, that whole situation may change. But a lot of y'all that are, y'all are, there are men that maybe make fifty or $60,000 a year. And y'all are like, well, I make $85,000 a year, so I can't date him. To me, that's asinine because realistically, y'all could put y'all's income together. Y'all are now in a household that's over $100,000. That's more than enough for y'all to live out of. Y'all can invest the rest. You can buy property. You can get stocks. You could go and get I-bonds, whatever it is that you want to do. Y'all could put it inside of IULs. There are so many things that y'all would be able to do together as opposed to you struggling on your own, knowing that you want love and you want a relationship. And again, I'm not saying you got to be with somebody, right, that that may not be able to take care of everything 100%. But realistically, if you're taking care of everything on your own financially right now, money may not need to be the leading priority. Do we want a man that has a job and works and can contribute? Absolutely. But am I going to turn him down because I make $85,000 a year and he makes $60,000 a year. All Deshaun is trying to get y'all to understand is that that may not be the wisest decision and you may be passing up on a really good man in a really strong relationship and the ability to be happy because y'all are all out here listening to what the uh, professional escorts are telling y'all about relationships. And on that note, I'm going to go feed my crazy cat that is in the background and get ready for work in the morning. It has been amazing. Thank you, all my panelists. Thank you all for joining and have a great day. Thank you, Missy. Thank all you, right, Deshaun. See everybody later. Bye, y'all.